win that one. Come or call us on 0749125000. Yeah, I'm trying to say that you can buy your ticket before 11 o'clock. Yeah, yes, yeah. you wouldn't let me speak. Have you a good weekend, Lee. <laughs> you were saying you're talking Once I get you in early, I'm not hanging about. Good luck. Good luck to you. Bye, right, bye, 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 bye. Take care. All right, that's uh, Lee Gooch, uh, who will be back with you on Monday morning at 6.30 with all the usual uh, fun and uh, games. Right, it is 9 o'clock. Our Friday panel is joining us very shortly. Claire McDonough, Mary T. McBride, Deputy Padraig McLaughlin. We're going to be running through some of the big stories of the day and the week. But first, let's get a news update and say good morning, Michaela Clark. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. The appearance of anti-Ukraine graffiti in West Donegal has been condemned. A pro-Russian symbol has been spray-painted on a sign in Kilmacrennan in recent days. It comes following similar acts of vandalism in Letterkenny last month. Councillor Michal Col McGill Aspick, who himself spray-painted over the graffiti, has hit out at those responsible. Unfortunately, there seems to be graffiti put on road signs, symbolism of hate symbolism which I define and many others as being racist. I thought of taking the initiative and redesigning the sign so it wouldn't be offensive to the people who are now living in Kilmacrenan. A Donegal deputy says comments made by the European Commission president around the Northern Ireland Protocol were very strong and helpful. Ursula von der Leyen addressed the houses of the Oireachtas yesterday to mark 50 years of Ireland's membership of the European Union. She's confident a protocol deal can be reached if there is the political will in the UK government. Deputy Padre McLaughlin says the people of the North deserve a fully functioning government. The challenge is now on the British government to engage, to do what's right, and then it's down to the DUP uh, to get back into the executive and to make sure that we have a government that represents the people of the North and you know delivers on the issues of cost of living, the health service and the range of other issues that people need addressed. Searches have been carried out in Straban as part of the investigation into the attempted murder of two police officers in the town on Thursday, November the 17th. Last evening, detectives from the Terrorism Investigation Unit conducted a search at a property in the Innisfree Gardens area. A number of items were seized and taken away for further forensic examination. 1.3 million people will receive their Christmas bonus next week at a cost of more than €300 million Euro to the state. The Minister for Social Protection, Heather Humphreys, said the payment will be made to pensioners, carers, people with disabilities, widows and lone parents. The payment is in addition to a person's normal weekly payment. Finally, for weather, today will be dry with a mix of cloudy periods and sunny spells. Highest temperatures of 8 or 9 degrees. That's all from Highland Radio News for now. We'll be back with news again at 10 o'clock. Until then, good morning. It's not just that Sammy has lost his home in the conflict. It's not just that everyone he's ever loved is gone and he's been forced to walk hundreds of miles alone to find safety. And most of all, it's not just that Sammy is only seven years old. Like thousands of children in regions torn apart by conflict, Sammy is living in fear and it's not just. This Christmas, your love can make all the difference. Visit trocra.org or call 1800 408 408. Trocra, until love conquers fear. The Nine Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Seasonal loans now available for Christmas. Apply online or via our app today and get your loan transferred directly to your current account. And now it's time for the talk of the Northwest, the nine to noon show with Greg Hughes on Highland Radio. And a very good morning to you. It is uh, four minutes past nine or three minutes past nine on this Friday, the 2nd of December 2022. You're very welcome along to uh, the program. The lines are open for you right now to get involved in our conversation with our Friday panel. Uh, the numbers for you to contact are 086602500 to WhatsApp and text. Or give us a call on 07491 You can comment on social media as you watch the programme. Go to YouTube, Highland Radio Ireland, or uh, across our Facebook pages. And of course, directly on our website, uh, highlandradio.com. Right, let's say good morning uh, to our guests this morning. And we say hello first to Deputy Padraig McLaughlin, Sinn Féin's uh, spokesperson on fisheries and marine. Good morning, Padraig. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Greg. It's good to have you involved again. Uh, Claire McDonough is co-director of La Maison Letterkenny. Good morning to you, Claire. Good morning, Greg. And uh, last but not least, of course, Mary T. McBride, defective blocks campaigner, human rights and global development consultant. Good morning to you, Mary T. Good morning, Greg. Thanks for having me. No, it's great uh, for you to accept the invite. And we will be speaking, of course, about that uh, issue a little uh, later on. Uh, there was quite a significant um, protest 
in Lifford on uh, Monday and we'll sort of maybe decipher what may or should uh, come from that. I suppose what should come from it, we know what may come from it, is what's uh, open uh, for discussion. Might start on something a little bit different, if that's okay. Uh, and I'll stick with you, Mary T. Uh, if, um, mm-hmm. A new deposit routine, a return scheme for plastic bottles and cans was announced during the week. Uh, the scheme will be operated by non-profit organisation Return.ie from February 2024. In shops where you buy a drink in a plastic bottle or can that features the Return logo, you will pay a small deposit uh, on top of the price of the drink. And then when you return that empty undamaged container, you get your deposit back in full. This is not uncommon in other parts of the world. Obviously, it's always going to be slightly more complicated for us and businesses locally because the cross-border element and the Return not being on those cans and... Anyway, we just have to deal with it. It's a, it's a levy on living on the border. We just aren't fully considered sometimes, I don't think. Uh, mm-hmm. On the face of it, what's your view on this one, Mary T? Um, I think it's better than nothing. I mean, our, you know, plastics uh, problem is is huge. Um, but I suppose for me, I, I would really question, are we trying to use a Band-Aid again to solve a more, you know, systemic problem? Um, I would like to see as in some countries, you know, they're moving towards the outright ban of of plastic, the use of plastics. Um, I think in my mind that would be more effective. Although I have to say it is positive to see um this I think I think it will be a solution that a lot of people will use. Um, you know, it is it's it's a it's a smart solution, I suppose, but it's a short term measure. Ultimately, we should be looking at moving away from plastics altogether. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of feel sorry, though, for those who already go to the recycle facilities religiously, you know, and deposit their bottles and their cans or those that uh, do so responsibly in the recycle bins. They're probably saying to themselves, look, we're already doing this and now we're going to be charged an extra 15 to 25 cent, depending on, on what we drink. Our one simple joy in life is going to cost us more. Uh, we're doing this stuff already. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean that that is a really important point as well. And it's, um, you know, these sort of, it's an example again of a policy policy measure that will hit a uh, lower income households um, again, who, you know, um, will struggle to be able to, to afford that. So I do think that that's definitely something that needs to be considered. Maybe, you know, the exact rate um, could be reviewed. But the reality is, um, you know, the environment and climate are are, are very real um, crises that we're all facing and they do require, you know, behavioural change at the individual level. Um, but also, more importantly, again, going back to my, my earlier point, um, it's not all on nor should it be all on the individual. And we need to start looking at corporations as well. And the government needs to start taking braver action um, to cut out, you know, ban plastics and look for, you know, alternative um, materials. Yeah, because yeah. we appear to be doing something, but are we mm. really? Like, it looks good. And Right, Claire, uh, McDonough, what, what do you think? I mean, it doesn't involve milk cartons, plastic milk uh, containers, uh, coffee cups, the cups that you get from your takeaway. It's just cans and bottles. Uh, do you, Are you in favour of it, Claire? Well, I think the people it's really going to hit are probably mostly young, younger people. You know, the kids coming out of school and buying, you know, a bottle of juice or whatever. I think those are the those are the probably the most um, frequent um, single use purchases of of that type of thing. I would imagine. Um, like my T says, like I'm in favour, but it doesn't go far enough. And at the end of the day, it's you know it's the very same as your plastic bag tax when you go to the supermarket and you forget you're penalised for your own stupidity really where you know if you'd remember to bring your bag you wouldn't have to buy a bag so maybe it you know it's one of those policies where I suppose the idea is coming from the right place but really you know there there should be a much longer term a much broader um response or maybe it should be um brought in alongside a complete replacement of plastics and cans and that you know if they were doing it duly and there was an ease in you know it would be easier to get fully Mm. on board but i accept that yes they have to do something but i do think it's younger people that are going to be hit with this yeah well there's this romantic notion isn't there that we'll 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 go out and we'll gather up the cans and the, the plastic bottles and we'll go in and get our shopping half price but the reality is is though uh, we're being charged in the first place. So really, what is the reward? It's already a tax and there's already a sugar tax on a lot of these drinks. And secondly, 
you know, you know, the likes of Lidl, Aldi, maybe Don's, they'll be able to afford the 20 to 40,000 euro for these machines. They'll frame it that come to us and get so much off your shopping. At your local uh, smaller retail may not be able to do so. They'll have to w work with plastic bands, bags and deal with these plastic and cans and all that kind. It's a, it's a hassle for them, but it's going to be another uh, advantage, is it not, for the big multinationals who will be able to say, look, we've got this beautiful big machine right at the front mm -hmm. door. Come out and get your weekly shop, shop at the same time. I think it's if I were a small, medium sized business and I'm not. I would think I would think right. This is going to give this is going to give the big boys another uh, advantage. Mm -hmm. Oh, I totally agree, and I think our our um, approach in this country is also, uh, uh, or to me, it always seems it's pepper and more little taxes, more little. You know, put them in under the rug, nobody will see it, and um, on a it's a completely different sector. But to give you a similar uh, example, and it's completely left field now. But Emro, for example, if you're a small business. You pay for electricity to pay to play music. You buy the CD or you pay for Spotify you or whatever. You you buy the device to play the music on, and then you're 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 charged then for Emerald. So like for me, you know, there's a, instead of actually coming up with a proper scheme to support musicians at source, let's just you know charge everybody else a little bit here, a little bit there, and they're not noticed, and it's like death by a hundred cuts. Mm. Whereas let's have a proper policy. You know, and this is just another example of that sort of like tiny little, they're not really noticed, you yeah. know. I'd love to see the pathway of that in-row money. I'd love to see how it ends oh, up back in the uh, so artist's I. pockets. So would I. Uh, because Brett, you I might really. choose to play all Donegal artists in your shop. Let's just say you happen to. Really? Correct. How much are they going to be collecting mm -hmm. from the likes of... Uh, Imro. It's not very, yeah. very transparent there. I'm not suggesting no. there's anything untoward going on, but really it's Taylor Swift uh, who is raking Correct. it in. Uh, you know, not <laughs> yeah. uh, Callum Keevney. Right, yeah, exactly. okay, uh, Patrick McLaughlin, you're the only legislator in this call for now, in case one of us might run for politics. You never know, we might steal your seat. <laughs> you're safe, Mark, don't worry. <laughs> 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 I have enough to do. <laughs> just, just, just might nick it on you. Come here. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, you're, you're looking at this from an opposition, opposition position. It is probable that you might end up inheriting this uh, this, this as well. Uh, um, but well, what's your view in the face of it? Yeah, I, 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 very similar to Mary T and Claire. You know, um, uh, my, my concern is, you know, we, we, we have carbon tax, for example. Uh, but if you want to operate an electric car in Donegal, it's very difficult and also very, very expensive. Uh, you have carbon tax on your home heating oil. Uh, if you want to go down the road of a retrofit, uh, if you're working, uh, it's a very, very expensive uh, option. Uh, you could almost argue unattainable. Uh, so you're being taxed for something that you cannot choose the alternative. You don't have the alternative path. Is that so what the just doing. transition is? Is that what a just transition that that, that 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 is that what that phrase sort of would 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 cover? Well, you, you see, you're taxing people's behaviours, mm. but people cannot change their behaviours. They cannot afford to change their behaviours. That's my concern. In rural uh, Ireland, particularly, and of course, you don't have a public transport infrastructure. So, if you're a young person living in Donegal and you get a job, you know you're going to have to get a car, uh, and it's probably not going to be an electric car. So, th these are the sort of concerns I have. Uh, also, in terms of plastics and cardboards and all of this in our blue bins, you know, are they being recycled? Are they being recycled? Uh, you know, or are they going to, uh, you know, heat to energy plants? You know, uh, so th these are the things that. You know, we're 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 being asked to change our behaviour. Well, we were exporting at one point. Was it ninety percent of our plastics uh, and, and metals to China, and then that changed? I don't know what what was put in in its place after that. Yeah, well, I'm not convinced that all of the blue bins that are collected around this country are being recycled. Uh, I, I'm not convinced about that, uh, I, and I, I've never been uh, given evidence that there's any uh, tracing or any accountability around all of that so the very people who are you know particularly him and ryan i have to look across at him every week and he annoys me every week uh and you know he gives a lecture and he you know preaches about salad on the front uh, of the house and you know i i don't see where he meets his responsibilities while he's giving people lectures and that's my frustration and i think when when people see that everybody is meeting their responsibilities uh, and there is a viable alternative you know then they will take it and that's 
We have a lot of work to do. This is serious business, though. We do need to change. Is that not just really a smaller version, though, of people in Ireland sort of saying, well, why should we do anything when America and China don't seem to be doing anything? That, that's just a, a, a shrunken down version of you saying, why should I do anything because Eamon no. Ryan isn't? No, no, I, I, I believe all of this is necessary. Uh, I, like, I do believe we need to move away from petrol and diesel and gas and carbon fuels. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I do believe we need to look at particularly the option of uh, offshore wind done responsible uh, with the the consultation with fishermen so they're not impacting fishing grounds. I think that type of thing needs to be done. We need green hydrogen. We need to embrace all of that. But people need to have a, a pathway, you know, an affordable pathway. Uh, so in other words, it's the carrot rather than the stick that will change all of these behaviours. Uh, Mary T, just briefly on the, on the broader question then, you know, we're still talking about the environment, aren't we? Even, um, you know, that recent major uh, summit COP, whatever it was, 22, 27, 27 yeah. sorry, uh, COP 27, you know, I mean, obviously they all flew into it in their jets. You know, there was cars in the back of the planes, there was people there that could easily have done it by Zoom, but they all talked and talked and they walked away. And, and what really has uh, fundamentally changed? We're still talking about this, but we're nev never, we don't seem to be actually making any inroads in, in into actually doing something. Yeah, I mean, just to go back to, you know, the term that you use there, Greg, around just transition, I think, you know, what we have is an unjust transition. And I absolutely agree with Parikh, you know, that Essentially, if you look at it, so we look at it at a local level first, <clears throat> you know, areas particularly like Donegal, um, we, you know, we can't move away from fossil fuel, fuel dependency in the same way as, you know, people in Dublin or um, due to our transport system, due to, you know, various factors. Um, a lot of policies are made without considering how they impact on, you know, uh, poor and vulnerable households or, or areas, if we're thinking about, you know, the county. And that and COP27 was a global version of that. So again, you had a lot of hot air um, or uh, blah blah blah. As um, you just <laughs> made me swear inside my head, Mary T. That's not. <laughs> but at, at a global level, you know, I in my work, I work a lot with um, uh, countries in uh, in Africa mm. who are very very badly affected by climate change. I mean, it's it's. It's devastating. There's massive um, food insecurity. Um, it's compounded by conflict. You know, there you can see the suffering. <clears throat> it's a really, it's a really, really, you know, big crisis. It's dire, really, isn't it? If we were to be transported there to see it firsthand and what the future might hold too, because it's a worsening situation. I think it's a different reality for us, isn't it? That we, we we don't. Many people listening do, but I think a lot of people don't truly know the impact the, uh, the, the uh, uh, climate change is actually having on, on certain parts of this world. Yeah, completely. I mean, the, just, you know, uh, cyclical droughts and floods mean that, you know, people um, can't even produce their own food anymore. You know, there's there's mass starvation. Um, but I suppose the point was I was trying to make it with um, COP27, it really badly let down um, those countries again. You know, there was there were a lot of kind of you know, um, fluffy statements and that. But again, no real commitment and no targets. So. Yeah. Mm. OK, um, well, just before a quick break, one point to you, Claire, though. You see, uh, just sometimes it feels that really policymakers, when they look at what they can do, they really talk about the majority of people, which tend to be in, in urban areas. So, you know, I think targets in terms of investment in public transport often really mean uh, you know, more services in, in the major cities, in Dublin mm -hmm. in particular. And then when they talk about sort of spending less money on, on roads and what have you, that's clearly going to impact on the likes of us here uh, in, in the northwest. I just wonder if that's just the way it is. Do we have to contend ourselves uh, if we choose to live in a rural part of Ireland that we are really not going to be fully considered in all of this? Well, that's why we have Porrick. <laughs> you know, I mean, at the end of the day, yes, we may be remote and we may, you know, we may be that little bit further out um, intellectually for people in Dublin that they don't actually consider, Dub you know, Donegal people in terms of the planning. But, you know, I do think um, our role as Donegal people, and it doesn't matter if you're in business, if you're a teacher, if you're a plumber, if you're public representative, your job is to uphold your county to defend the place that you love where you want to live we live in a democracy we live in a beautiful country i 
I'm married to a dub. I would not live in Dublin for love nor money. Sorry for anybody who lives in Dublin. It's a lovely city to visit. But I mean, I, you know, I really do think that we should not be punished, but we should not also be of the mindset that we are punished all the time either. I think it's up to us to, you know, put forward very valid arguments, whatever it is, if it's transport, the environment, whatever, about how how Donegal can respond to the challenges. Yeah. There are always ways we, we have a I, lot I, I of do, very smart I, people I, living here. I, you know? I exactly get what you're saying, and I think we have to talk ourselves up, and I do I, mm -hmm. I do understand that, but it, it, it the policies are beyond some of the yeah. stuff we're talking about it's like health yeah. policy for example in other words that you know you it's are going struggle. to have to accept it seems yeah. a poorer health service if you live in donegal the hsc the head of the hsc uh, in this region has clearly said if people want the best of treatment they're going to have to be prepared to travel for it unapologetic in that so there is a a sort of a a, a wealth and health tax uh and a, for, for living in the northwest now it seems to be it feels to me like that that's accepted not by yeah. us, but but no. by by those that make decisions. That's the setup, you know. And but that's the point I'm making. But when you choose to live in Donegal, you are aware of that. Mm. You know, nobody nobody moves to Donegal. Like I have a member of staff who's moved, um, country actually to come and work with us, but from a different part of the country. You know, she, you know, when you when you come to Donegal, you you have some sense of what it is you you know you're buying into. Yeah. That's not to say we we accept it that's not to say that it's good enough um but i do think um you know there, there's an awful lot of uh potential here there's an awful lot of uh, very smart people I, and you know i think part of what's what makes us great is the fact that we do um face up to the argument yeah. you know we do make our case and we are you know we're very strong opinionated strong-willed people okay. and i think that stands to it but it's just the nature of living here i think when you live off center that's that's the nature of people's personalities anyway all right well park there are solutions though i mean we are a stone's throw away from uh, uh the fourth biggest city on this island if it is yeah. about center of population and all that kind of stuff do you know what i mean i know there is the 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 northwest city status i mean that's the that's really i think our get out of this isn't it that we view the northwest as a whole whether that has to be uh post-border poland i don't know but that is it. We are isolated. We're isolated, though. And this is no way to contradict you, Claire, if we don't consider the massive population west to own and, and in Derry. I mean, that's that's our out here, isn't it? Yeah, you, you're you're 100 percent right. You know, and, uh, and in fairness to Donegal County Council and Derry and Strabane Council, they formed this northwest city region. Um, you know, I was at an event recently in the uh, it's now called the Atlantic Technological University in Letterkenny. Where they're working with uh, the ETB in Donegal, with the uh, McGee campus in Derry, with the Northwest College in Derry. So all these third level uh, institutions working together as one one region. We have half a million people in this region. There's no reason why we can't have all of the health facilities that people in Dublin or Cork uh, or Belfast uh, have. There might be some uh, very narrow specialities, you know, uh, you know, in, in terms of cancer care, but rare forms of cancer are, are, are rare forms of illness that you would base in Belfast or Dublin, but that's only a small percentage. So what infuriates me, you know, you take Letterkenny Hospital, for example, uh, you know, we don't have a diabetes center of excellence. We don't have cardiac center of excellence, even though we have half a million people in the region. Why? Because they engage back to back. So you have the sale to hospital group, uh, which is, you know, Greg is, is Galway, Sligo, Mayo, Port and East uh, um, Galway and, and Letterkenny. Everything gets centred in Galway, you know, even though we're right next to Derry. Every time you say this to them, they say, yeah, yeah, no, we're taking that board, but they're not. You know, and similarly in the north, it's probably the same uh, where things get centred in Belfast. So there just needs to be a complete radical rethink of the region. And in fairness, our people in this region are leading the way. I just uh, wondered what it actually need. I know it's sort of a, a, a throwaway word, but I don't know if it needs to be radical. I think it just needs to actually to be common sense just to say well you know what there's four corners to this island uh we've got up the northwest we've got a perfect solution here you know it might take a little bit of reorganization i don't want to simplify it either but it's like literally it just feels like there needs to be the will there because the way is probably relatively easy for the, the brains that we have uh involved here 
Yeah, you, you, in fairness, you're right. It is common sense. I mean, and if you look at the you know radiotherapy unit in Alton Galvin and Derry, which you know hundreds of people in Donegal get treatment there every year. Why did that happen? Because some women in Donegal said we've had enough, uh, and they started to speak out. And then thousands of people in Donegal and in Derry, in fairness, got behind them. And that's why we have that radiotherapy unit, which means people don't have to go away, don't have to go to Galway in Dublin. You know, why do we have to always have it? that it's people having to come out and protest for what you rightly say, Greg, is common sense. All right, listen, thank you very much uh, for now, all three of you. We're going to take a very short break. That's the voice there of Deputy Podrick McLaughlin. We're also hearing from, um, for the first time in this item, Mary T. McBride and also Claire McDonough, co-director of La Maison Letterkenny. The Nine Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Seasonal loans now available for Christmas. Apply online or via our app today and get your loan transferred directly to your current account. On Friday, Jive Time will be live from the 10th Birthday Bash at the Dry Arts Complex. There's in-store giveaways all week at the Dry Arts. And this Friday, they'll be giving away a €1,000 holiday voucher, hampers and much, much more. David's special guest is Derek Ryan. That's the Jive Time show this Friday from 2.30 at the Dry Arts Complex, Letterkenny. Spoil someone with a beautiful perfume this Christmas from McGee's Chemist Letterkenny. Choose by designer, budget or celebrity. Top names like Clarence, Flarbon, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Calvin Klein and Burberry. Also, Yves Saint Laurent, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Elizabeth Arden and so many more. All at McGee's Chemist, Main Street, Letterkenny and online at mcgees.ie. McGee's, with the best, cost less. Hello, Hill 16 Insurance. How can I help you? Up the dubs. Ah, hi. I am looking for a home insurance quote. Right, oh, and what part of Dublin do you live in? I don't actually live in Dublin. Roy, they at least support the dubs. What? I'm just looking for home insurance. Well, you're going to have to keep looking, pal, because Hill 16 is Dublin only. Do you get the feeling that your insurer doesn't want you? Well, at Local Insurance, we are Irish-owned and understand your needs. Call us today for a bespoke quote on 0818 894 444. Local Insurance, we'll get you sorted. The Local Insurance Network, DAC Trading's Local Insurance, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Local Insurance is a tied insurance intermediary of Acorn Brokerage Limited. Acorn Brokerage Limited, trading as Acorn Insurance, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Donegal County Council invites you to come along to the Letterkenny Public Information Event to find out about the council-led projects and services in Letterkenny, such as regeneration, roads, recreation, economic development, housing grants and business supports. Drop in to the Radisson Hotel Letterkenny on on Monday 5th of December anytime between 2pm and 8pm. Some years ago, I was the victim of a serious crime. The person serving a life sentence for that crime now has an opportunity to apply for parole. But I also have an opportunity to have my voice heard by the parole board. Victims of a serious crime. Your voice counts in the parole process. Find out more and register at gov.ie forward slash parole board or call 01474-8770. For all your home heating needs, oil, gas and solid fuels, National Fuels, Pierce Road, Letterkenny. 9113895. National Fuels, bringing you the time at... The time's 28 minutes past nine. Right, OK, the Irish government is loosening the strict caps on bankers' paying bonuses imposed after the financial crisis as it dismantles a regime that lenders say has hurt their ability to attract and retain staff. I'm not sure how many vacancies there are in uh, the senior banking position posts, but there must be uh, a crisis. Now, let's not forget now, banking executives were largely blamed uh, for the catastrophic lending policies and practices, which ultimately led to Irish banks being bailed out by us at a cost of 45.7 billion but enough time has passed seemingly for us to forget about it uh deputy mclaughlin um i i, I don't think i recall receiving a text uh, from a, a listener saying you know what i think it's about time we started paying these bankers a bit more i haven't heard the calls from anywhere except from uh bankers themselves yeah you know a, a, a thing that concerns me if you look at sort of the financial services industry and banking industry you have uh, former government politicians who are heading up the, the, those lobbies and you know that is a real concern uh, and then when you see you know at a time like this when you know the government have had to intervene in the budget with the cost of living crisis with so many families who are struggling to get by i just it defies words you know absolutely and i looked across at 
the tea shock this week uh, and last week, um, you know, uh, and and the challenge came from Mary Lou uh, and Pierce uh, from uh, Sinn Féin uh, in the relation to how can people who get paid half a million feel the need to get more. Uh, but he uh, said uh, with a straight face that this really was effectively your party taking food out of the mouths of low paid uh, workers in the banking industry. Yeah, and I, I've I've watched, you know, uh, as the Sinn Féin whip, I sit right behind Mary Lou and I look across as she does at them. And I've heard some bizarre exchanges, but that was utterly bizarre. His attempt to connect bank clerks and the people that we see in our local banks uh, with the people at the very top of that pyramid. Um, and, you know, what they said, remember, remember the, they said, if you know, if you, if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. So we got monkeys. Uh, in the financial crisis. we got monkeys who destroyed this country. Well, I feel like I'm in a time machine because we now we have the construction industry calling for tax breaks for developers. It's it's all starting to feel very, very familiar. Yeah, you know, when I, as I say, I, I actually use that phrase, you know, I, I that, that phrase, peanuts, monkeys. I hate that phrase, actually. I've always hated it. But that was the phrase they used uh, in, in the banking industry. Uh, and, and we got people who racked this country would utter, I mean, we, we all went through the inquiries, we we seen the investigative reporting, we got right under the bonnet and watched how they ran our banks. And remember, since the financial crisis, we've had the tracker scandal, which was 300 million in fines. I think in the last year, it's about 197 million in fines in the last year alone, regulatory fines in the banks. So they're not exactly doing a great job. They were going to close down all our local banks uh, in Inishowen uh, there recently until we intervened. And I'm sorry, not just in Inishowen, across rural Ireland, in fairness, to point out that. So, you know, we had to intervene. This is a state-owned bank that was going, thought they were going to do that. So, no, absolutely not. And I, I think it's it's one that has shocked people around the country, to be frank. Mayor T. McBride, I just think sometimes that people think we're silly. Do you know that, that you know, they sell us a, a, a recycling absolutely. scheme as it's doing us good, but in reality, we're paying more for it. That, uh, you know, the argument's also made for some of the top RTE presenters uh, that there are, you know, radio stations and TV stations lining up to... To, to take them away and the same with uh, senior banking executives that if we don't allow them to make multiples uh, of hundreds of thousands of euro in some cases that they're, they're, there's people waiting in the wings to, to drag them by the ears out of the country and offer them the sun, the moon and the stars. Yeah, I mean, it was, it's absolutely ridiculous. I thought um, the best headline for me was uh, Reuters yesterday it referred to it as a cheeky moment for Pascal Donahue to do this. Um, to be honest, though, I don't think it's it's cheeky. I think it's outrageous. Um, I mean, and also, again, this sort of, um, I think it's quite kind of condescending towards the public. And again, as you said, Greg, thinking we're stupid to try and spin this as in the interest of customers of the banking sector. I mean, I don't, I'm probably going to get into trouble now, but um, I'm just thinking, you know, if my boss gets like a, you know, salary increase, I don't think it's going to have very much impact on my work performance, you know, me being at the, the frontline kind of services. I mean, if they're if that's really genuinely um, Pascal O'Donoghue's concern um, to ensure that they can improve products and services in the banking sector, then maybe, um, and I think Sinn Féin did point this out as well, um, Pierce Doherty, then if that is the concern, look at lower level, you know, frontline service worker salaries, if that is the case. It was just disingenuous for me at best. Yeah. Yeah. And also, too, it's, there's a timing issue here, uh, Mary T, in that this is one of Pascal Donahue's last, last acts as it's almost a part and gift. I'm not saying it is, but it feels like it, like the optics of it are really, you know, hard to swallow. And I'm thinking, too, for businesses, you, you know, uh, 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 who are having to deal with banks that are having to pay huge charges that make have to make them make decisions about cash and cards and all that type of stuff. Uh, a scheme just to help them through the winter only just announced that's going to be reasonably hard for people to access. And yet, the 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 a lot of the the people uh, you know the, the 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 banks that have been responsible for so much pain in this country that heads of those banks once again are going to be rewarded. It's just like it's it, I find it so hard to get my head around. I find it hard to articulate. I, but I don't find it hard to get my head around, if I'm being honest. Um, I mean, let's be honest about it. If you look at this record, and in particular the two political main political parties leading the coalition in government, what we've seen is increasingly over the last couple of years, number of years, they've become more emboldened 
when it comes to serving certain serving and protecting certain interests in this country and that's the wealthy and the powerful so to, to me this wasn't a shock you know um uh, it's it's really in line with mm. their real kind of approach to policy making in this country and yeah. um, you know lift this uh ridiculous half a million like isn't enough you know salary and um, for banking executives and um, i just think it's another indication that you know we desperately need change in this country i mean claire it just is unimaginable that with all that's gone on and and and, and podrick referenced that the, the tracker mortgage, mortgage scandal that's all not historic that was up that was still a problem this year that we would begin now to reward what what seems like whether it's actually what we're doing or not reward that type of behavior reward people uh, or at least you know the the areas in which they work that cost us 45.7 billion as if it's gone that's not gone i mean that's still still being paid back but to reward and, and maybe even to create again once again a culture that got us into that bother in the first place Oh, absolutely. You're 100% right. And I think, you know, if you're, if, uh, you know, both Mary T and Patrick then ha have spoken about that, you know, the overall policy level. But if you bring it back down to the person in a village in Donegal whose bank has closed mm -hmm. and they go to the hole in the wall, if there is a hole in the wall and the bank eats their card for whatever reason, they now have to drive. Like I'm thinking of my 70 I'll not say ish mother whose bank was eaten in Moville. She had to drive to Cairndonna, <clears throat> uh, uh, you know, a journey she shouldn't have to take at her age. And then she opens the paper yesterday and there's bankers bonuses come back up. Uh, as Mary T said, as if half a million is not enough. Like what lifestyle do you have at half a million? I would love to know where you would get a wee bonus of 20,000. And if you were on half a million, would 20,000 make any difference to you. It's like it's just it's so on the ridiculous it's it's actually it would be funny if it wasn't so offensive to and, people and, and, and especially the considering thing. there is an established link uh, and it might be opinion but i think it's provable mm -hmm. that the link between pay and financial performance was what really led to the the shoddy practices Correct. that got us in, in in so we actually know this is was historic we know what happens right so uh we don't yeah. this is not something we have to learn into the future we know yeah. um go ahead Patrick. were you going to say something there or just last word no on this no, no i i i think that's uh, claire and mary to you have covered it uh, i think that's how people feel on the ground all right listen uh we're going to move on to our next topic now actually before we do a quick word uh what about the government mandating claire I'll, I'll start with you on this one um because i want to talk about uh, the defective blocks as well what about the, the government plans if i read it correctly to mandate that um cash would have to be accepted i think that come out of the maybe out of the out of the surprise to those who thought the government was trying to push for a cashless society but anyway here we are uh, they want to compel businesses to accept uh, cash and, and and maybe sort of enshrine cash usage and, and cash availability what do you think of that claire well actually i don't as a business owner i actually don't have an issue with that i think we need cash in our society we need ways to teach our children about the value of money and how to deal with money and how to um you know how to, to how to live in the world and the value of things um i it, it probably depends sector to sector i get that and i'm a small business and it you know my business isn't actually we don't you receive a lot of cash because a lot of our customers are online and all of that and that's fine but i would never just more from a moral standpoint i would never refuse to cash money because i you know i i just think it's 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 a slippery slope um but i do think i think just the point you made earlier about um um pascal's swan song i would be more and i know we're going to talk about michael but i would be much more impressed by our government if they if you know if we weren't talking about these ridiculous uh moves like you know bankers and and bonuses and they actually got down to brass tacks yeah, but mary t worked said, on the things that actually matter to yeah, people but, which but, are things uh, like making i don't want to misquote mary t but she said and she can articulate herself she already has is that we always seem to be looking after or maybe it was you claire we always seem to be looking after the rich and well off well mm -hmm. there's two decisions that that do and and as you say the it left in the wake will be a a half-cooked uh scheme that no one can get on Correct. All right. Correct. Uh, right. We'll go to that after the break. Mary T, do you have a, 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 a an opinion on the, these government plans to? 
Yeah, I suppose just very quickly, I think what we do need to realise as well is that, um, again, thinking about, well, what would be the impact of 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 not, you know, mandating <clears throat> businesses to accept cash? And I think, like, you have to think think about people who wouldn't um, have access to a traditional bank account. Um, and unfortunately, that normally does tend to, to affect certain minority or ethnic groups in a country, um, including Ireland and people on lower incomes. But I suppose the bigger one for me, and I remember, um, I think it was, um, what was it, Women's Aid, who brought this up um, a few years back, that what people don't realise is that, you know, um, people who are living in situations of domestic violence or intimate partner violence, um, you know, they may not have control over their finance, mm -hmm. may not have a bank account, and they, you know, are hugely dependent on being able to use cash. Mm -hmm. So I would be in favour of the mandate, personally. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's certain things um, that will happen naturally anyway, do you know, as things go on. I think an awful lot of people, despite Claire's best efforts, I've given up to try and use cash to sort of teach children about the responsibility of money. They're, they're transitioning away from, from, from that to some extent anyway. So I think there'll be a natural sort of fall off in the use of cash, despite those maybe not wanting that to be the case. But anyway, I could be wrong. I've been wrong multiple times before. Uh, right, OK, let's take a break. Then we'll be back with more from our guests. The Nine Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union, offering low-rate car loans with fast approval. Apply online at letterkennycu.ie or in office today. For great fuel deals, contact Gortley Sales and Hire. Large sacks and trailer loads of logs. Also briquettes, coal, kindling and gas with free delivery locally. Contact Gortley Sales and Hire in Letterkenny on 91 76. Treat the GAA fan in your life to a Donegal jersey or the Six Sock Donegal Men's Gift Box this Christmas from Michael Murphy Sports and Leisure. There's also great stocking fillers like snoots and bobble hats. Shop local and find the perfect gift with free next day delivery on orders over 85 euro at michaelmurphysports.ie. Andrea, Matteo and Virginia Bocelli together for the very first time. Their brand new album, A Family Christmas. The Bocellis, A Family Christmas, out now at selected Tesco stores. Callahan's Gala and Go Bert, your one stop family shop. Drive in to our newly renovated spacious forecourt, fill up with our upgraded modern fuel pumps, and save with our keen Go Fuel prices. Located on the main Letterkenny to Derry Road, we're the ideal pit stop on your Donegal journey. Fast flow fuel, self service, or attended with a smile. Sure, it's all go at Callahan's. Your next move matters, so why not move better? Start your move to permanent TSB today. Apply in-app for our award-winning current account. So don't just move bank, move better. Apply in-app today. Applications for Explore Current Account in-app in sole name for over 18 personal customers. Residents of Republic of Ireland only. Fees and charges, terms and conditions apply. Awarded bunkers.ie best current account 2022. Permanent TSB PLC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Highland Radio are on the road in 2023. Join us for our trip to Dublin on Thursday the 23rd of February to see the 25th anniversary show of Michael Flatley's Lord of the Dance. This show has amazed audiences across the globe with its future of high energy, Irish dancing, original music and storytelling. Sit back and relax as we take care of everything. Your trip includes luxury transfers to and from Dublin, staying at the four-star Clayton Hotel in Dublin, including breakfast and your ticket to the show. Call us today on 074 91 25000 for more information. Now, what I thought was a, a really strong turnout um, on Monday at the County House in Lifford, uh, People uh, gathered to express their frustration at the uh, lack of movement, the lack of uh, the lack of movement in the uh, defective concrete redress scheme, but also, I suppose, the lack of supports in terms of money for emergency accommodation um, for for temporary fixes, and also uh, a lack of will. It seems to help people who need to get out of their houses uh, in what is a housing emergency. The houses are simply not habitable, and it's well documented the damage to their health, their mental health in the immediate term, but also the long term that can be caused um, as a result of being forced to live in, in these really, really unsafe uh, properties. 
Uh, Mary T. Uh, McBride, um, I mean, you, you can understand, it's clear to understand why people felt the need to go out um, and, and express their, their frustrations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I suppose for me, the first point uh, I think we all need to realise is that the protest on Monday was very, very different um, than previous protests. Um, it was really an act of desperation yeah. at the end rather than, you know, the previous protests in Dublin and in different towns in Donegal were very much a campaign strategy at that point, I think, because we were in, you know, a process where people were still hopeful that, you know, um, we could move things forward. But um, just hear, hearing, you know, those homeowners, their harrowing accounts, um, it's like, hope there's no hope left, you know, and it just really was was um, heartbreaking. Um, but, you know, will it do anything? You know, will it move things forward? Um, to be honest, Greg, I'm not confident for a number of reasons. You know, I suppose, firstly, none of this is new, you know, I mean, especially if we if we break them down into different four different groups of homeowners. So those poor families and you mentioned it already, Greg, um, like Sharon Moss, who I know you've had on your show um, um she's tried every possible avenue you can imagine she's written to the minister she's had them visit her home she's gone on to local and national media and um, crying for desperation she was there on monday again and um you know they've known about uh, the families like sharon moss since at least last year so you know why hasn't there been movement um because there... There, is it because there seems to be an acceptance within uh, RTE, which is uh, whether people say they watch it or listen to it or not, it is, you know, the national broadcaster. There's an acceptance within RTE and seemingly in government that this that they have done it, that it's done. Let's move on to the next problem because Donegal and the 13 other counties are sorted. That, it, and if that is the attitude, well, what hope do we have of, of changing that? But I think more confusing for, for protesters on Monday was the fact that there's just such, you know, that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. So, you know, the council told protesters outside the council on Monday that uh, with regards to the issue of fast tracking these grants um, for emergency accommodation and that they were awaiting the uh, green light from the department. Meanwhile, I mean, you couldn't make it up. On the very same day, due to questioning by both Sinn Féin and also uh, Deputy Pringle um, uh, in the Dáil and in the Oireachtas Housing Committee, Ona Bryn, um, we got, you know, contradictory information. Darrow Brian, Brian very clearly said that the department is actually waiting on information from the council with regards to the scale of this problem of un uninhabitable homes to be able to fast track grants. So, you know, it's just unacceptable at this point. To have you know a miscommunic breakdown in communication when you have uh, people in very dangerous situations but then greg this is the other point i wanted to make um which you know is kind of a new development i suppose this week and um, the fact that you know uh the council held a meeting with scheme engineers so this is after the protest early earlier this week and um, where the council confirmed that it will now accept prioritize and obviously as we know this is on the back of the Department's announcement four weeks ago. Why did it take four weeks, right, to call this meeting with the engineers, number one, if you're really, you know, committed to action? And um, secondly, and I suppose this is the more worrying thing, um, at that meeting, the engineers, I understand, were told that the council will accept pyrotite as long as there can be a proven link between pyrotite and sulfate attack on the concrete aggregate. But so what does this mean? This is effectively the council going back to those homeowners who've already spent thousands um, on their tests. You have to redo those tests. You're going to spend thousands again. And um, you still haven't been refunded for, you know, the tests that you already made. And this is the kicker, Greg. Um, and I'd really love if you could follow this up with a scheme engineer. The kicker is that even if you manage to find those extra thousands and redo your tests, Good luck finding a lab that has the technical capacity to do those tests, because my understanding is the labs that are being used don't have that. I mean, these types of tests, as you know, and you've had them on your show as well, Dr. Lehman um, from EMPA, um, which is Swiss Federal Laboratories, they're the leading experts. 
and um, they ran those tests and so i highly doubt you know the engineers are going to be able to find labs well, a logical solution to this would be that the government when they realized which is a long time ago that that established some sort of a testing system within this country i mean what, what type of stage are we going to stop exporting really 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 important testing situations i'm not i, I presume it couldn't be beyond them but if you, if you want to take it seriously you bring it in house and you you make sure all this is is covered and you fast track it you say this is an emergency we need to get on this we can't rely on this that and none okay i'll come back to you of course uh, mary t um deputy mclaughlin uh, you know I, I, he you know he says he says council versus department of housing it doesn't matter really it does matter and it's really important but it, it, again, the victims, the people in the middle, the people that are getting stuff piled on top of them, on top of them, on top of them, again, are vulnerable homeowners. And, and, and you know, that's who I want to uh, speak of and represent. It's just simply not good enough. Yeah, I, I, I was there on Monday, Greg and Lefford and, and Mary T's right. Uh, it was a protest like I haven't seen before. It was people who are desperate. Uh, I was speaking to Sharon Moss uh, at it, and I've been in Sharon Moss's home uh, and it's just disgusting, absolutely disgusting, that in this country today that we ask uh, any human being and a family to stay in a house like that, uh, that we don't immediately provide alternative emergency accommodation immediately, like you know. Um, and of course, there's you a know who's responsible for that product. Uh, sorry to cut across you, because yeah. who the council has a role in if if, if someone is become homeless or someone homeless, they can contact the council. I understand the council can provide uh, B&B accommodation or whatever, right? So how come when there's an emergency like this, it is not the council's responsibility? They don't have to necessarily go and get permission for every other. Uh, why can the council not say, right, okay, we're ele- we represent the people. This is a crisis within this county. This is what we're going to do. Yeah, it, it, ultimately, the Minister, Daryl O'Brien, uh, I've said this now months ago, months and months and months ago, uh, to task, please task the housing agency, uh, you know, uh, bring in whatever regulation under the law needs to be done, it can be done very quickly, that the housing agency and Donegal County Council to go to the families, and we know there's a, you know, dozens right now who need to get out of their homes, and some already out of their homes, by the way, were forced out, they, they were able to get alternative accommodation, they're paying rent, they're paying rent themselves with no financial support. I spoke to a woman just last week in that situation, been making representations for her now uh, since and so many of our families. Uh, and then the latest thing was, I'm waiting on exact numbers from Donegal County Council. What a load of crap. You know, like Lisa Hone is the chairperson of Mike Action Group. Paddy Diver, Lisa Hone, Mary T, they can provide the information about the amount of families who need to get out of their homes now. I can do it as a public representative in the county. So, like, this is an emergency. How many times do we have to say? Where does the uh, buck stop? Has the council uh, got a free, not a free pass, but are they getting a pass on this? In other words... No, they're, they're not actually. They're, ta- they're taking the hits for, for Daryl O'Brien's failure. Uh, Daryl O'Brien didn't face a protest on Monday. Yeah, but is the council uh, actively lobbying government or the housing department to say look this is unacceptable this is what we have to deal with hurry up do this for us or are they sitting waiting for a letter to come from the housing department well, one thing that that I, I i find really really frustrating in recent weeks is that donegal county council has passed a motion to go and meet a cross-party delegation urgently with the minister and what did the minister do he met the chief executive of donegal county council in a private meeting that none of us know the outcome of. We don't know what questions were asked. We don't know what the outcome is. All we know is apparently he's, he's looking for extra data. But he didn't meet the democratically elected representatives of the people of the county. You know, a cross-party delegation. And I, I, I'm not being party political. I think councillors on the ground get this of all political parties and none. Uh, you know, that this is a humanitarian crisis in this county. And by the way, Greg, it won't just be for now. And this is why I want to talk about high-quality modular homes. We're going to need high quality modular homes built, and I'm going to spell it out Moville, Carndonna, Bunkrana, Muff, Newton Cunningham, Letterkenny, Milford, Finn Valley. You know, they're going to need to be interspersed throughout the county for the foreseeable future. The reason why is people do not have alternative accommodation. You can't get a house to rent in this county. So that needs to be done now, now, without a shadow of a doubt. There can be no defense or excuse for not doing it. And, and, and that means that if you're moving out of your house, you'll be in that. A high quality, modular, perfectly good home 
for a, for a year or so. The next family will move in. The next family will move in. So and and then the housing agency oversees. But all why of that is there no will for that? Why is that? What? Why? And we are seeing that, right? And 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 you know, don't have to go down the obvious route, but you can see why people are getting angry and frustrated and feel even more worthless in this country given the fact that we are responding to other crises, and quite rightly so, 350 million euro given to hotels and given to B&Bs, and, and, and that's what has to be done. That's fine. This is not money being taken from the mouths of uh, people affected by uh, defective concrete. It's about the will, right? It's about the will. Why then is there a resistance, such a resistance, to help these people in the most obvious ways we all know how it can be done? I, 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 I honestly, for the life of me, can't understand it. I, I, I think what it is, and I'll, I'll offer this up, I think that some people in politics got tired of the bulgy, determined, Donegal people standing up to them, and they decided that we're passing this legislation, we're forcing it through, ramming it through the doll back in July, uh, where, they, where they were forced into some degree of scrutiny, and that scrutiny, anybody to watch that video of that committee that day, just watch it, watch the entire, take your time. You know, you'll watch a box set on Netflix and Donegal. Take seven or eight hours to watch that committee hearing that day. You know, I'll never forget it. Mm. The whole way through from start to finish, and you'll get, right, what's going on uh, with all of this. And and, and and so what it is, and, and but I'll tell you something now, Greg, if that is their strategy, it's going to fail miserably because people in Donegal are, are not on their knees. They're up and they're saying, we demand, this is a humanitarian crisis. If it happened to people in Cork or Kerry, we would feel the same, or Wexford or Dublin, but it's happening in Donegal and we want an urgent response from our government. And, I, and you know, and like I, I, I've gone into the doll every week and I'll do it every week. And in fairness, Thomas Pringle and Pierce Doherty, you know, we would do it every single week. Uh, until they do what's mm. right. And Darrell O'Brien is Darrell O'Brien is the person who can sort this all out. Donegal County Council have been tasked. I, I think they've got many things wrong, but Darrell O'Brien is the person that needs to sort this out urgently. Urgently. Yeah, Claire, it's it's it's, it's just hard to, to to imagine that people are being treated like this. It really is. Like I, I mean, I can't understand it. Yeah. I, I, so, I, so can I just actually quote uh, the lady we spoke to? Um, her name will come to me in a moment made the analogy if this was an earthquake every resource would be thrown at Donegal uh, housing would be built millions upon millions but this is a slow earthquake and it does and that's exactly what it is these houses are falling down slowly mm -hmm. becoming uninhabitable and it doesn't seem to matter Claire sorry go ahead there no I was just going to say you're absolutely right at, at, everything in this seems to be about timing the lack of timing you know the lack of response the lack of clarity the lack of communication you know when I and you've mentioned other crises there and there have been other tragedies and crises within Donegal and we've seen a huge outpouring and we've seen emergency humanitarian services swoop in money provided as the absolutely rightly should be and I think you're right because the MICA and the defective blocks has been ongoing but it is it has been around so long now and we our response and I when I say our response I mean you know everyone's response statutory and otherwise um time is moving on we i can't but i actually cannot believe even that the the people who are in that desperate situation right now where they have to get out and i don't know how many families that is but i can't even comprehend why they even need to be treated as a group you know if somebody became homeless tomorrow because of a domestic situation they contact the council there is a process why are these people not open to that process that's exactly I that's exactly the point i was trying to make and you've made it much I much better than i was well i just don't understand why you know uh, there is an immediate need there is already a process there for somebody in immediate need it doesn't matter why yep. you know in the sense they need a house it doesn't matter why okay. they need the house. they need they need it now so i agree with you i think the response has been horrendously bad right we're going to come back to this of course into the future um but for now um, very strong points and you know what it's difficult to play devil's advocate does anyone out there believe that this scheme is correctly stalled does anyone out there believe that these families should not uh you, you know what I mean? Try and strike balance as much as we can on this program. But come on, seriously, where's the alternative to this? I think there's not anyone listening that doesn't realise that this is an absolute disaster for these people. Uh, Deputy Padre McLaughlin, thank you for your time, uh, as always. I appreciate it. Take care of yourself. Um, Claire McDonough, always enjoy your contributions. Thank you so much. Uh, and we'll speak again, hopefully. And last but not least, uh, Mary T. McBride, I'd uh, love to have you back on this item into the future. Uh, really enjoyed your uh, company, thank you.
Thanks, Greg. All right, take care of yourself. We'll be back with the weather forecast before the news. The 9 till noon show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Do you need to switch your Ulster Bank loan or overdraft? We are now offering competitive low rates, switcher loans and my CU current account with overdraft. With the ongoing war in Ukraine affecting the cost of energy, many of us are facing a challenging winter. Through Budget 23, Government is introducing a range of supports to lessen the financial impact on families, households and businesses. And will continue to monitor the situation in the coming months to protect those in difficulty. It's important that everyone stays warm and well, but where safe and possible to do so, reducing energy use can also reduce bills. Changes like turning your thermostat down by one degree and considering how often you use energy-intensive appliances like tumble dryers can make a big difference. For information on available supports and energy-saving advice, visit gov.ie forward slash reduce your use. Brought to you by the Government of Ireland. It's not just that Sarah can't rely on the rains to come this year. It's not just that the only water left could cost her her life. It's not just that she has seen all her crops destroyed and she is struggling to feed her little boy. Like thousands of parents living in regions devastated by drought, Sarah is living in fear, and it's not just. This Christmas, your love can make all the difference. Visit trocre.org or call 1800 408 408. Trocre. Until love conquers fear. Swing into Christmas with the Rat Pack. Live at the Grianon Theatre Letter Kinney, December 14th. Direct from London's Leicester Square. And for one night only, enjoy classics from Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr. and Dean Martin. Tickets from Anne Grianon Theatre Box Office and AnneGriannon.com. Presented by Joe Gallagher Entertainment. Are you ready to grow your career? At AXA, our branch network is growing and we're recruiting new team members. Based in the local community, you'll receive all the support you need to develop a rewarding career as an insurance professional. Competitive salary and full training provided. Apply today. Visit axa.ie forward slash careers. And now the Highland Forecast, brought to you by Shop LK. Widespread Christmas shopping this December in Letterkenny. See shoplk.ie or like us on Facebook. OK, today we'll be dry with a mix of cloudy periods and sunny spells. Temperatures 8 or 9 degrees with light east to south uh, east breezes. Back with more after the news and obituary notices. Live on air, online and on the Highland Radio app. This is Highland Radio News. Good morning, I'm Michaela Clark with the news at 10 o'clock. The appearance of anti-Ukraine graffiti just outside Letterkenny has been condemned. A pro-Russian symbol has been spray-painted on a sign in Kilmacrennan in recent days. It comes following similar acts of vandalism in Letterkenny last month. Councillor Michal Colmagill Asberg, who himself spray-painted over the graffiti, has hit out at those responsible. Unfortunately, there seems to be graffiti put on road signs. Symbolism of hate, symbolism which I define and many others as being racist. I thought of taking the initiative and redesigning the sign so it wouldn't be offensive to the people who are now living in Kilmacrenan. The judges in the Regency Hotel murder trial will rule this morning on whether a secretly recorded conversation between Jerry Hutch and Jonathan Dowdle can be allowed into evidence. The court hasn't sat since Tuesday as legal arguments are considered on the admissibility of the contentious piece of evidence that involves 10 hours of recordings between the pair as they drove to Northern Ireland a month after the shooting. Jerry Hutch is on trial for the murder of David Byrne, who was shot dead at the Regency Hotel in Dublin in 2016. A Donegal business owner believes despite the county being viewed on a different level to other parts of the country, that it does offer great potential. Claire McDonough, a member of Letterkenny Chamber, says the people of Donegal should not be punished and that it's up to people residing in the county to stand up and put forward their own valid arguments. She told the Nine Till Noon show this morning that the people of Donegal need to stand up for their county. Yes, we may be remote and we may, you know, we may be that little bit further out intellectually for people in Dublin that they don't actually consider Donegal people in terms of the planning. But, you know, I do think our role as Donegal people, and it doesn't matter if you're in business, if you're a teacher, if you're a plumber, if you're public representative, your job is to uphold your county 
to defend the place that you love, where you want to live. We live in a democracy, we live in a beautiful country. 1.3 million people will receive their Christmas bonus next week at a cost of more than 300 million euro to the state. The Minister for Social Protection, Heather Humphrey, said the payment will be made to pensioners, carers, people with disabilities, widows and lone parents. The payment is in addition to a person's normal weekly payment. Irish Water is working to repair a burst water main in the high road area of Letterkenny. The utility is advising people that supply disruptions may be experienced. A traffic management plan will be in place for the duration of the works, which are expected to be complete by four o'clock this afternoon. A first-of-its-kind conference is taking place at the Donegal campus of the ATU next week. The Innovation and Entrepreneurship Conference will see representatives of industry and government support agencies explore how the North West can lead the way in innovation, technological development, entrepreneurship, teaching and research and public-private co-creation to sustain and accelerate an inclusive and resilient economy. Dr Anne Burke, Senior Lecturer in the Faculty of Business at the ATU, says it will give businesses an insight into how to adapt to the changing environment. We have some fantastic speakers. We have Professor Kavlak and Warren Bramley, who will deliver keynotes that will ask businesses in the region to pivot from traditional business models and to discover why collaborative innovation and co-creation is so valuable for organisations in our region. In addition, we have economist Stephen Kensler, who will consider what the tech crisis says about Ireland's economic development model, what the major forces of change in the economy are, and what all this means for businesses in our region as they strive to succeed. Weather night today will be dry with a mix of cloudy periods and sunny spells, highest temperatures of 8 or 9 degrees. That's all from Highland Radio News for now. We'll be back with an update again at 11 o'clock. Until then, good morning. The obituary notice is for this Friday morning, December the 2nd. The death has occurred of Margaret Peggy Devlin, Nate Gallagher, Mahara Beg, Burnfoot and formerly of Castle Gal, County Sligo reposing at her home this afternoon from one o'clock. Removal tomorrow evening at quarter to seven to St Mary's Church Fawn to repose overnight at the request of the deceased. Requiem Mass on Sunday morning at half past eleven, followed by interment in the adjoining cemetery. Family time please from eleven PM until eleven AM. Family flowers only please donations in lieu to Bunkrana Community Hospital Patients Comfort Fund, care of any family member or Murphy funeral directors. The death has taken place of Patrick Duffy, 8 Woodend Meadow, Bally Magori and formerly of St Coleman's Drive, Straban, reposing at his home today from 12 noon. Fiona leaving his home on Sunday morning at quarter to 12 for Mass in St Mary's Church, Melmount at half past 12. Interment afterwards in the Sacred Heart Cemetery, Derry Road. Family time please from 11pm until 11am. The Requiem Mass can be viewed live via the parish webcam. The death has taken place of Danny McGinley, 21 Curly Hill Road, Straban, reposing at his home. Fiona leaving his home tomorrow morning at 25 past 9 for requiem mass in the Church of the Immaculate Conception, Straban, at 10 o'clock. Interment afterwards in Straban Cemetery. Family time please from 11 o'clock tonight. Donations in lieu of flowers please to Marie Curie, care of Quigley Funeral Directors. The Requiem Mass can be viewed live via the parish webcam. The death has occurred of Anne Coggins, Nay McGarvey, High Barnet, London and formerly Ards, Creeslot, Donegal. Her funeral will take place in St Michael's Church, Creeslot, County Donegal, tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, followed by burial in Doe Cemetery. Mass can be viewed live on mcmmedia.tv. Family flowers only, donations in lieu to the Creaseland Disaster Fund and the North London Hospice, care of any family member or James Harkin, funeral director. The death has taken place of Robin Law, Marble Hill, Dunfanaghy, County Donegal. Wake had his residence today from 2 until 5 o'clock. Family and friends welcome. Funeral service in Holy Trinity Church, Hornhead Road, Dunfanaghy, tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, followed by private cremation. The death has taken place of Ellen McLaughlin, Eddie, Seaview Terrace, Glengad, Mallon. Ellen's funeral mass will take place tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock in St Mary's Church, Lag Mallon, 
fall by burial in the adjoining graveyard. Family time please from 10 o'clock tonight and before the funeral tomorrow. The death has taken place of Tom Riley, formerly Hillview Liss Monaghan Letterkenny. Remains will repose at the residence of his daughter Julie and Arthur McMahon, Cherhoman Milford, this afternoon from 4 o'clock. House private. Be on a mass tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock in St. Ginan's Cathedral Letterkenny. Burial afterwards in New Lex Cemetery. Be on a mass can be viewed on churchservices.tv. Family flowers only. The death has occurred of Jared Jerry O'Donnell to Lark Hill, Steelstown Derry and formerly Clonmel, County Tipperary and East Barnet, London, reposing at his home. Family time please from 11 o'clock tonight. Removal from his home tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to Our Lady of Lourdes Church, Inch Island, for requiem mass at 11 o'clock, followed by interment in the adjoining cemetery. Family flowers only please. Jerry's funeral and requiem mass will be recorded and can be viewed on Inishon Funeral Services Facebook page. And the death has occurred of Mary Doherty, Nay Dugan, Darius Clee, Glenn and formerly Cloncarney Trenta. Remains reposing at her family home in Darius Clee. Funeral from there tomorrow morning for requiem mass at 11 o'clock in St Columbus Church Termin with burial afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Family time please from 10pm until 11am. Family flowers only, donations if desired, to the Donegal Hospice. For more details, including any family health guidelines for wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. Cutting through the spin. The Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. OK, you're very welcome back to the uh, second hour of the Nine Till Noon Show. Good morning if you're just joining us. It's great to have you on board. Uh, you missed an interesting uh, three uh, guests on our Friday panel. It's available for everyone to uh, watch back right now. Actually, you can rewind on YouTube, but it'll be up as a podcast on our website or available to watch uh, on our social media uh, later on, just after 12, in fact. Right, OK, so if you are interested in winning a €30,000 brand new Nissan Duke, um, you'll want to enter our mega car draw. You can get your tickets right now on our website, highlandradio.com. Uh, uh, you answer a simple uh, qualifying question. It is really a simple qualifying question. And uh, you buy your tickets online. Now, if you are going to buy a ticket and you can Get it in the next 50 minutes because we are giving away a thousand euro for everyone who enters the card draw at 11.30 on this program. Really looking forward to that. The trombola is in situ. It's ready to go. And uh, your name could be added to that uh, trombola over the next uh, 50 uh, minutes. So uh, we also have another thousand euro to give away on Around the Northwest with John Breslin. And then another thousand euro to give away um, on Jive Time with David. Now, the only way you can be in all four draws, that's the three 1,000 draws and the car draw, is if you get your ticket between now and 11 o'clock. Now, just to let you know, you can buy a single ticket. Perfectly fine, up to you. It's €10 Euro for your chance to win one of those great full prizes, the big one being the car, of course. Uh, you can get six for 50 if you want to give them as uh, Christmas presents. No problem there. Uh, in advance of Christmas, of course, because the draw for the car is before Christmas, you understand. Uh, or you can get 10 for 80 euro, two for free for 80, one for free for 50, and you can buy a single ticket for 10 euro. Now, uh, if you are not inclined to do this kind of stuff online, we have uh, our team ready to take your call right now on 07491 25,000 for you to purchase your tickets over the phone. Now, just... Uh, to make it as quick as possible, a process for you guys out there, would you make sure that you have your uh, debit or credit card available and um, the names of those that you're putting on the tickets, if, it's, if you're buying multiple tickets, just have them uh, ready before your call, and that means we can process it much quicker. So if you want to be in with a chance to win that beautiful black Nissan Duke, brand new, worth €30,000, uh, and also you want to be in, uh, a ch with a chance to win one of three prizes of €1,000, Get on the website right now, highlandradio.com, or give us a call on 074 and we'll make sure, I'll personally make sure, that
that your tickets go into this uh, draw drum, which is in studio with us here. Those watching across our social media and online will be able to see that draw drum. It's already got a number of names in there, of course. Uh, yours can be added to that. Okay. Get in touch with us right now, 0749125000, and I guarantee you we'll get you in that draw for the €1,000 at 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, and uh, 3.30. And also, even if you win, by the way, even if you win the €1,000, your name's popped straight back in, and you could also win that beautiful uh, Nissan Duke. Right, okay. So good luck to all of you uh, who are entering uh, that today. Uh, we have loads of your comments. Thank you for those that came in uh, over the last hour. I'm going to get to those, but I also want to give you out there, your loyal bingo players, a chance to win. Here are the numbers. Good luck if you are playing today. Uh, I'll chat to you after these in a short break. It's time for NCBI Bingo on Highland Radio. It's Friday the 2nd of December. You're playing on the yellow sheet. The reference number is S20. It's game number 48. The numbers are... 70... 63 2 34 9 66 6 27 14 and finally 62 Phone your claim to 91048 before 8 tonight. Leaving your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book and we'll call you back the next working day. Get all your NCBI bingo information at highlandradio.com. The 9 Till Noon Show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Now offering MyCU Current Account and Debit MasterCard. Bringing full banking features delivered with the same local trustworthy service of your credit union. Choose your MasterCard this winter and you could get 10 euro back when you make three purchases. Maybe it's the bus to work, popping out for milk, or bringing home food for the cat. Why not make us your payment card of choice? Register now at mastercard.ie forward slash register to get and you could be one of the first 20,000 people to get 10 euro back with three purchases. 18 plus Republic of Ireland residents. MasterCard card holders only. From midnight 10th of November until midnight GMT 11th of December 2022. Offer ends when 20,000 entrants have qualified for cashback. Full T's and C's, mstor.cd forward slash IE terms. House to Home Interiors Bridge End Donegal. Our new recliner suites are now in stock. Get your order in today in time for Christmas delivery, starting from only 1499. Also see our new range of slide robes and our flooring section, including carpets, wooden floors, and dining floors. All this and much more at House to Home Interiors Bridge End Donegal. Are you buying a Christmas gift for the swimmer, camper, hill walker, angler, adventure traveller, equestrian enthusiast, skier, farmer, outdoor worker or happy walker this Christmas? Wet n Wild is your number one shop for quality outdoor clothing, footwear and equipment to stay warm, safe and dry in the beautiful Donegal Outdoors. Save hundreds of euros on custom charges when doing your Christmas shopping online with Space Hub Dairy. We provide a full virtual address mailbox service for all your Christmas parcels and post. Save hundreds, possibly thousands, on custom charges this Christmas with Space Hub Dairy. Call 048 7187 8077 for more details. No. Good boy. Keep your hat on, pet. Why? We're playing dinner at the North Pole, remember? So we need to wear our big warm coats inside. When it comes to food or heat, many families will face impossible choices this Christmas. Please support the St. Vincent de Paul Annual Appeal. Donate locally or at svp.ie. Thank you. Keep out the cold, cold, cold this winter and ring Fleming for their full range of garage doors, agri doors, insulated doors, milking parlour doors. Fleming, 91 48 234. Candles, lanterns, Christmas trees, decorations and all types of lights. Everything you need for Christmas. Experience the magic of Christmas at Cooney's. Our biggest and best Christmas shop has outstanding value on lights and trees. There really is something for everyone at Cooney's Letterkenny Retail Park. The Euro Millions Mega Draw is back and it's pretty big. I mean, it's totally massive. This Friday, the Euro Millions jackpot will be a guaranteed 130 million euro. It's just too big to miss. Play responsibly in store, in app, or at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. It could be you. Now, I want to mention a couple of things. Firstly, 
A coffee morning is taking place uh, in the Carragard Parochial Hall this Sunday afternoon from 12 noon until 2 p.m. And it is in aid of uh, Donegal Down Syndrome. So that's something nice for you on Sunday afternoon if you're in that area. Call in to the uh, very nicely laid out, actually, very nice building, the uh, Carragart Parochial Hall, this Sunday between 12 noon and 2 p.m. for a coffee morning. Cup of tea, a cup of coffee, maybe some buns. And uh, you'll be supporting Donegal Dan Syndrome, so get into that if you can. Uh, the switching on of the Christmas lights in Convoy will take place this evening at 6.30 p.m. Everyone welcome. So uh, it's good to see that a little bit later. Uh, because there's a couple of switching ons that I wanted to get to, we wanted to you know, bring Hudson and that to, but they start at 6 or 5.30 and uh, you just can't get back from work on time. So it's good to see a 6.30 start time. That's uh, for the switching on of the Christmas lights in Convoy this evening. Also, um, I've been asked to mention that uh, St. Bridget's Church Golan in the parish of Kilmacrennan, uh, their Jubilee celebrations are taking place this year. Uh, the 150th anniversary Mass is on tonight at 7pm. The main celebrant is Bishop Alan McGuckian. So if you want to join in those Jubilee celebrations uh, in the St. Bridget's uh, Church Golan in the parish of Kilmacrennan, of course, uh, the 150th anniversary Mass is this evening at uh, 7pm. Uh, and while I'm at it, I'll mention the Donny Loop Christmas Tractor Run. It's taking place on Sunday, the 11th of December. That is uh, Sunday week. So if you've got a tractor, a truck, a vintage, maybe you want to glam it up for Christmas and you want to enter, uh, well, you'd be more than welcome to do so in supporting a, a really good course, of course. Um, registration is at 11 a.m. on Sunday the 11th. The run starts at 12.30 p.m. It uh, starts at the CPI Centre in Castle Finn, by the way. Uh, refreshments for all participants, indoor craft and visit from Santa, baking competition and music, best drag dog... Best it's easy for you to say, Greg. Best dressed dog competition at quarter past one. Jimmy and Paul from Highland Radio will MC, but please don't let them, uh, don't let that put you off. Uh, proceeds will go to the Donegal Hospice and uh, St. Saffron's National School. That's the Donny Loop uh, Christmas tractor run uh, on Sunday, the 11th of December, with Highland's own Anton Deck, uh, Jimmy and Paul uh, MCing uh, the events. If you want to enter your truck, uh, your tractor or your vintage, well, then you do so uh, on the morning, 11 a.m. All right. As I said to you before, I've been to a couple of those now. And uh, I love them. Uh, great fun. Great atmosphere. And the young ones love it. And the older ones love it. And um, it raises money as well. Isn't that fantastic? Right. To some of your comments, uh, did the government make the people in Dublin do all those de all those te these tests when there was pyrite in their houses? Uh, very tame sort of protest at Lifford, says uh, this caller in other countries. Uh, Micro-affected blocks would have been tossed through the council chamber windows. Sadly, the Irish people have been conditioned to tug their forelocks to their betters. I don't think that would uh, achieve anything uh, at this point. I understand where you're coming from. Where people often say, look what the French do, look what... But, uh, you, you know, I'm not quite sure it would work in this instance. But anyway, who's to say? Cash is king. No to a cashless controlled society where the elite will have full control. Well, the elite are the ones that are legislating to ensure that uh, cash is usable in shops and what have you. It's uh, they, the elite, if we're talking about the government, who are going to mandate that uh, cash machines are available. Um, so maybe this just uh, it's not quite as it may have seemed in the past. We'll see. We'll watch with interest. I watched a sale agreed sign go up on a house this week in an estate that has uh, mica. Uh, defective concrete, really, it is, is the broader term mica, um, you know, uh, uh, and it was a useful word to sort of get the campaign and the ball rolling and to get attention. But it's beyond mica now at this point. We know it's uh, it's a defective concrete. But this caller believes uh, that this is a disgrace that an estate agents or auctioneers or homeowner would sell these homes to unaware buyers when... Is something going to be done about this? Um, of course, do we know the full details that the buyer is unaware and that the house actually has defective concrete? I'm delighted to see accepting cash being made compulsory. I know where I, when I go out, if I lift €100 Euro and spend it on a night, that's my spending. If I take my card out, I can have €200 Euro tapped before I really realise it. Going cashless was just making people spend more money. I don't really don't use cash, right? And this does not cloud my opinion. It just suits me. I don't like carrying it because then I'll lose it. Uh, I've never got this thing that because you're tapping, your spending can 
you, you know, you, you lose control of your spending. Uh, on the contrary, I think it's made me even uh, even tighter. Uh, a caller says the frontline workers still not have received their 1,000 euro they were promised and there's nothing else to say. Yeah, indeed, it's we've raised it twice already this week alone. Uh, Greg and team, I predict I predicted by text to the show before I even started. Uh, before it even started the COP27, uh, when the previous uh, 26 were nothing more than a big boys club with the exception of a few females and just no more than a talking shop or even show and how right I was and oh, how I hate being right, says Mary. Can any of the panel throw any light as to why solid fuel prices haven't come down the same as petrol or diesel? There's lots of variables in relation to that. Uh, the strength of the dollar is problematic. How much is being produced is also a problem. And uh, demands, you know, petrol has come down quite significantly. Diesel, not so much. They've kind of been decoupled now. Uh, there's huge demands on diesel. And, of course, they decide how much of it is produced or not. So regardless of how much a barrel of oil is, there are is other factors, seemingly, that dictates the cost of these uh, fuels. The solid fuel prices, a lot of that's uh, uh, environmental taxes, isn't it? How many pay massive pay rises have our polit politicians had in the past few years? Didn't hear them protest then. In fact, three out of five of Donegal TDs enjoy millionaire status with the other two not far behind. I'm, I'm not sure of that. I would like to enjoy millionaire status. I'm not going to lie to you. And this is not in any way to uh, diminish your point. It must be lovely. Uh, the country is being governed uh, by monkeys. It's a very sad state of affairs. There's a lot of anger on behalf of the people. And can I also speak on behalf of monkeys as well, who are actually really quite capable, uh, intelligent beings. Simon Coveney says Northern Ireland protocol deal possible within weeks, not months. Uh, would Podrick be hopeful? I'm sure he would share. I can't speak on his behalf. I have no idea what he thinks. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's the British and the Europeans that are negotiating it. And there seems to be these buzz phrases. They're in a tunnel at the moment. They found an off ramp and hopefully they'll find a landing zone. But it seems to be. Look at someone like Simon Coveney does not come out and say that unless he knows they're on the brink of something. Uh, he's not guessing. He knows what the story is. So if he says something will be sorted before the end of the year, you can be assured uh, that the white smoke has indicated such. He has an inside track on that. Buses, Greg, there's loads of them running, but not at the right times. I live in Moville and work in Letterkenny. I start at nine and finish at 5.30. There's no bus that will get me to work on time and get me home. The same for Derry. That is crazy. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I think any bus service running from one end to another should try and go along uh, office hours at the very least. Dara O'Brien says this listener is changing the law right now to bypass good environmental planning. Offshore wind will destroy our seas. Why has the west coast of Donegal been excluded from the list of potential marine protection areas? Um... Bishenolis? Bish, Bishenols? Or is that a misspelling? I don't know. I've never seen that word in my life. On wind turbine blades are poisonous and cause infertility and cancer to humans and wildlife. So I've never heard that before either. I've heard it about a lot of things too. Uh, so on. Our offshore wind turbines are bad news. De degrowth is the answer. We cannot keep expanding production. A caller says, I'm a carer. I work with two elderly people and we're having real problems getting their vaccines. They aren't mobile to travel to get their vaccines. Nobody's talking to us and they are passing the book. It's not fair. They're so worried. Right. If you could get back in touch with us, give us an idea of where you are and uh, we will um, endeavour to see if we can chase something up, presumably with the HSC, to try. And uh, I understand where you're coming from. And you're a very good carer, by the way, as well, to, to recognise their fear and their want and uh, if you get back in touch with us we'll try off air and privately try and work with you to try and come up with a solution uh, so if you haven't uh, had a more extensive conversation with Caroline please get back in touch uh, and let's get that sorted for you uh, and you uh, and those people these tactics are used by government to frustrate and demoralize uh, the public the government knows exactly what's needed to fix these houses people need to say outright that they will not vote for these parties and start one of their own Another, it's obvious why nothing is being done for defective block homeowners. Neither the council or the government want to spend the money. They're leaving it for Sinn Féin to do. But the problem is, is and I get what you're saying, right? But the money's been budgeted. It's in the budget. It's allocated. An awful thing happened about five or six weeks ago where someone from somewhere leaked the fact that the 5,000 for uh, emergency remedial works and the 15,000 for accommodation was about to be announced. Now, I don't know if, if that was done genuinely or disingenuously right but it gave people some hope uh, it was on the front of one of the papers we mentioned it too uh, off the back of that nothing came of it 
another insult to injury. On in someone leaked it, by the way. It was reported. That's not the reporter's fault. Uh, but who and why did why was that backtracked on? Good morning, Greg. Could you please mention that there is a bazaar bazaar on in Burtonport Community Centre. It's on Sunday at three o'clock. It's a lovely event to go to. Uh, that comes in from Mary. So if you're in uh, and around beautiful Burtonport, I haven't been there for ages. Uh, due another visit. Or is it ages? Maybe it's last year. I don't know. Can't say in case I wasn't allowed to be there because of COVID. That's a joke, by the way. Uh, I was there, but I'm sure I was allowed. I wouldn't break the law. Uh, good morning, Greg. Could you please mention that there's a bazaar on in Burtonport Community Centre. I say that tongue in cheek, by the way. It's on Sunday at three o'clock. It's a lovely event to go to. Get along if you want something to do on uh, Sunday. And Woreski's Christmas Lights Kerry Kill will be lit up from six o'clock tomorrow. Donation box at Crib and all proceeds going to Donegal Down Syndrome. That's their chosen beneficiary this year. Looking forward to getting along to see Mary and the crew there myself. Uh, that's Warski's Christmas lights, Kerry Keel, all lit up, ready to go from six o'clock on Saturday the 3rd. And uh, there's a donation box at the Crib. And also, too, if you want to uh, fast track your letter to Santa, uh, you can go and post it there as well as enjoying the uh, light spectacle. Okay, let's take a break. Back with more in the 9 Till Noon show after these. The 9 Till Noon show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Offering low-rate car loans with fast approval. Apply online at letterkennycu.ie or in office today. Highland Radio have done it again! Buy a ticket to win a car valued at €30,000 before Friday, December the 2nd. And you... Who, me? Yes, you will have three chances to win €1,000. These draws before the big draw will take place at 11.30, 1.30 and 3.30 on Friday, December the 2nd, live on Highland Radio. Yes, it's that simple. Get your Christmas off to a flyer. Go to highlandradio.com, click on the car link, purchase a ticket, answer a simple question and win. We could be ringing you and helping make this Christmas stupendous. Get back on the road. Check out these special offers at Simpson Supermarket Letterkenny. Lions tea bags, 240 pack, 5 euro. Tito crisps, 12 pack, 2 euro 50. Cheerios, 700 gram, 2 euro. Neil's flour, 3 kg, only 3 euro. See the massive range of Christmas decorations in store with new stock arriving daily. Plus, Simpsons are now taking orders for Christmas turkeys. While there, check out Peggy's Kitchen Cafe for great food, tea, and coffee. Only two minutes from Letterkenny Hospital. Simpson Supermarket. Great value every day. Suckler Cow Destocking recommended to Minister. For more in this week's Irish Farmers Journal, here's Paul Mooney. We reveal details of proposed scheme for suckler farmers to wind down or get out. Veterinary medicine and fertiliser changes hit legal roadblock. What you need to know about the new TB testing rules. Plus calls for farmers to be paid two and a half thousand euros per hectare for re-wetting. And in Irish country living, don't miss your free 36-page Festa food magazine. Inside this week's Irish Farmers Journal, you can can't afford to miss it. Hello, Farmer Tinney here. Tinney's Toys are now open seven days a week. New stock arriving weekly. Our Christmas club is now open. Check out our entire range online at tinneystoys.com where we offer free shipping on orders over 75 euro. Buy now, pay later with Klarna. No extra charges. Tinney's Toys, Ireland's largest farm toy superstore. <laughs> Down by. National Fuels Churchill Delivering home heating oil in Letterkenny and surrounding areas 9137 400 National Fuels Bringing you the time at The time is 10.32 or if you prefer uh, 10.31 I have two computers and I can choose which one uh, displays what time The correct time is just approaching 10.32 Right, okay, our lines are really busy by the way for those of you who are looking to get in on the draw Please uh, be patient as much as you can. We will get to you uh, because you have 28 minutes now to enter the competition. By the way, we can run it over a little bit for those of you we have to call back, OK? So uh, we appreciate uh, your time and patience. If you're uh, waiting on a call, if you're buying tickets, please have your credit debit card available and the names of who you're putting on the tickets if you're buying more than one. And uh, we'll hook you up because the, for those of you who just switched on, 
we are giving away before Christmas, just before Christmas, the last Friday before Christmas, a 30,000 euro Nissan Duke. Beautiful, beautiful car. It's on display or was on display. I think it still is down at Letter County Shopping Centre. But today what we're doing is, is just as an extra special thank you. Uh, we are giving away 3,000 euro, 1,000 on this show, 1,000 on John's show, 1,000 on David James' show. To qualify for that, though, you have to buy your tickets for the car before 11 o'clock today. Uh, you can go on our website, by the way, and beat the cues, highlandradio.com. Or uh, if you want to give us a call, 074-9125,000. We're working through uh, those calls. All right, that's uh, Mariah Carey, All I Want uh, for Christmas. And we're putting together, by the way, a lovely show. Well, we hope it will be a lovely show for you on um, for the Friday before Christmas. And um, we'll have loads of different guests and uh, people that contribute regularly to the show on. And uh, hopefully some more exciting um, announcements as it relates to that day. And the lead up to that as well, of course, we're going to be in giving it away mode. Uh, we've a lot going on here um, at Highland Radio, so uh, we look forward to sharing that all 
uh, with you. Right, let's get to some more of uh, your comments here now. Um, and we talked about the issue of, uh, well, various issues, miscellaneous, let's put it like that there. Uh, someone texted in on vaping, you have to be 18 to vape, same as cigarettes, can't fathom why they're allowed to vape on buses and at school. You don't have to be 18, do you? They're only just introducing the laws now, or they only just introduced the laws now in that regard. I think card payment should be mandatory as businesses that don't accept card payments as they don't declare it and avoid taxes. That's always a, a theory, I'm not quite sure. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, does revenue not have access to your bank accounts and all? It might be quite hard to, to hide large uh, income from cash. Maybe I'm being naive. It would be convenient to go cashless, but impossible if you have school-aged children. Are schools looking for ways to avoid having to send children out most mornings with small amounts of cash? Uh, another show you can't pay by cash for a new driving license. They're a joke. You can't even go in and see a football match uh, with cash anymore, can you? If I can't manage my finances and only uh, can, can only do okay with cash and a restaurant refuses my service, then I would encourage my friend circle to boycott such a place. That's it, indeed. But I've, like, I'm the the. I thought it was an interesting angle because uh, coming from the uh, representative group for uh, restaurants, because the, the, what I've seen anyway is actually. Um, Businesses saying that we only are taking cash. Often it's down to a card machine being down or something. But I got the impression a lot of businesses favour cash. Um, right, OK. Another caller says here, I was talking to a girl who was in secondary school and she said it's like a game of chicken to see who can get a toke of their vape when the teacher's back is turned uh, to the board. So they're puffing on their vape uh, mid-class. I had a power outage this week. It was my own fault. Two people from the ESB came out to me and stayed for over three hours in the cold in Corandona. They worked so hard and I didn't uh, get the chance to thank them properly. Uh, okay, well, you've done it now. So if you are those ESB workers and you help that person out, they are very, very grateful. I was uh, watching... I, I don't think it would get anyone in any bother, but I thought it was quite nice, actually. I was watching the teams out washing signs, power hosing signs. Uh, and I presume they've been sent out to wash... Um, road signs um, and what have you. But I noticed them also cleaning business signs, which I thought was very nice, wasn't it? Uh, they didn't have to. So they did the, the, the poll with the, you know, Capri left, wherever right, wash that down. And then there was a business sign there and they give that a spray as well, which I don't think they have to. And also, too, there was a couple of... Uh, defective concrete uh, signs as well and they give them a wee power hose which as I say I don't believe that's part of what they were asked to do but they were doing it anyway so fair play to them they were out washing signs uh, but also washing businesses signs that I saw hi Greg my husband starts at 6 30 in the morning and finished uh, whatever time he gets done could be 12 13 14 hours a day or more and the company don't pay shift allowance for those hours that comes in from uh, a listener there uh, in case some may feel a certain amount of sympathy after watching Quinn's Country documentary, hands up, how many have paid 100k for a family member's uh, wedding cake? Did that happen? I haven't seen it yet. I wonder, did Michael Fanula watch it? They're going to be joining us after uh, 11 o'clock uh, for all things uh, entertainment and fun. We want you involved in that conversation. Did you get your Spotify rap? Anything jump out at you at that? The most listened to, I, I've. this is what's making me question this whole Spotify rap thing. My most listened to artist apparently was Ed Sheeran. Now, I think some, I don't dislike Ed Sheeran, right? But I don't like him so much that he'd be my most listened to artist. I think something's going on there. Who was yours? Mind the door, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing worse than when you walk into a door. Uh, after the switching on of the lights in convoy, why not join us in St. Ninian's Hall for our Christmas fair? Have a, a warming cup of tea or coffee. See the stalls. Santa arrives at 7.30. Everyone welcome. All right, that's uh, your night and evening sorted in convoy. Um, there is buses to Letterkenny and Derry that gets you in before 9 a.m. Okay, happy to point that out as well. Uh, good morning. None of the private ambulance workers have received a, a thousand euro COVID frontline payment. It's totally unfair as we spent hours on end in the back of the ambulance with COVID patients, yet we have been overlooked. It's un completely unacceptable. And, and the un some of the, I mean, everyone who's received it did their bit, don't get me wrong, but some of those that are um, not directly employed by the HSE that still have to receive this one thousand euro, which these are people not on fantastic money 
uh, that face all the other challenges that everyone is facing. A thousand euro before Christmas would be a real big difference maker. And there's some real key workers uh, who are being forgotten about that are due that 1,000 euro. They earned it uh, and they still have yet to receive it. We'll chase that up again at the start of next week. Wasn't it lucky that that good councillor just happened to have the matching colour of paint to redesign the signs? Yeah, I think that's a reference to the story on the news. Uh, Raymond says, given the uh, defective concrete catastrophe and the lack of specialist health facilities here in Donegal, perhaps we should start calling out the situation for what it really amounts to. Donegal phobic. Um, let me see. Right. OK, let us take a break for uh, a break, actually. Uh, coincidentally. We'll be back with more on the Nine Till Noon Show after these. The Nine Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union with monster loans available up to €60,000 for all occasions. Visit letterkennycu.ie The county's number one talk show, The Nine Till Noon Show on Highland Radio. What's gravity? When does the grass grow greener? Can people with longer legs jump higher? How are plastic cups made? How filthy are our parents? Which ingredients make the best slime? Why do we dream? Are you faster than a calculator? Could a robot be powered by fruit or vegetable? Kids are full of curious questions. ESB Science Blast, delivered by the RDS, empowers children to investigate the science behind simple questions just like these ones. Find out how your school can get involved at esbscienceblast.com. Did you see Fran's letter to Santa? No. Dear Santa, I want a dolphin. Real one, please. And a donut as big as a car. Dunn stores can make Christmas for almost everyone. Whether you dream of amazing food, a beautiful tree, or the presents underneath it, we've got you covered. Except for dolphins and car-sized donuts. We'll leave that to Santa. Make Christmas for everyone at Dunn Stores. Ireland's best-selling car, the Hyundai Tucson Diesel, is available to order for January 2023 at Divers Hyundai in Letterkenny. Yes, Divers have diesel Tucsons in stock for January collection. Order yours today or book your test drive by calling Divers on 9122600. The Hyundai Tucson Diesel, available to order for January at Divers Hyundai, Canal Road, Letterkenny. Don't miss a night of the Country Stars, live in concert on Monday the 5th of December in the Mount Derrigal Hotel, Letterkenny. Featuring Jimmy Buckley, Brendan Shine, Patrick Finney, Olivia Douglas, Declan Nerney, and your host and compare, David James. Tickets now on sale from hotel reception and online at Eventbrite. That's Monday the 5th of December at the Mount Derrigal Hotel. Years ago, I used to dread my motor insurance renewal. Then a friend told me about O'Malley Scanlon Insurance in Ballybuffet and Dunlow. They do all the hard work. They contact all the major insurance underwriters and they get the very best possible quote for me. They have saved me a small fortune over the years and they could do the same for you. When your insurance comes up for renewal, contact O'Malley Scanlon Insurance at their Ballybuffet office on 913020 or their Dunlow office on 952206. O'Malley Scanlon is regulated by the Central Bank. Nico Morana Yenov can virus Kasula COVID and flu, or can virus Elan Givra Yachant. Nothing darmer than a ruddy simply. Kasula the Lova and E, Kah Mask, Osko Finoiga, five vaccine, or can Chandalog, or can Sponsavalia, Matatu Teen, no Matu Symptomert. Ta Isagin Ganibri Nikaman at Simply Shah. Dainanish Irach than Lova Nuchthra Oil or COVID and flu, or can virus Elan Givra. Fogra or Realtas Naharan. Have you taken out a commercial lease on a property such as a business property, shop unit, factory or agricultural land? Have you registered details of that commercial lease with the Property Services Regulatory Authority, the PSRA? If not, you may be breaking the law. Tenants of commercial leases are legally required to register the lease with the PSRA within 30 days of receipt of the related stamp certificate from the Revenue Commissioners. It's an offence not to. Remember, register details of your commercial lease online now 
at psr.ie. Fill your table full of luxury this Christmas at Lidl. Break out our deluxe smoked salmon just $3.99. Try our alcohol-infused deluxe Irish Christmas puddings, only $6.99. Ooh, and get fine wines from $7.99 from your drinks retailer of the year. Do Christmas without compromise at Lidl. More for everyone this Christmas. Always drink responsibly. All ready for next year? We are with our award-winning Seat SUVs, the bold crossover Arona, the family favourite Ateca, and the spacious seven-seater Turaco. All ready with great PCP finance offers and a service plan for just $9.99 a month. Available to order at DMG Motors, Claw Road, Donegal Town. Book a test drive today. Visit seat.ie to find your 231 SUV. Finance provided by Volkswagen Financial Services Ireland, trading as Seat Financial Services. Subject to lending criteria. Terms and conditions apply. Volkswagen Financial Services Ireland Limited, trading as Seat Financial Services, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. New arrivals at Meehan's offer full include ladies' jackets, hoodies, sweatshirts and leggings. Also men's shirts and polo shirts in sizes up to 6XL. There's slim straight and bootcut jeans from 35 euro plus a large range of diesel hoodies half zips and body warmers at Meehan's Offer Full. Christmas Club now open. Hi, Pat Short here. And Face Short over here. I can see that. They don't know. Okay, okay. They can't see it. Uh, we're here to tell you about our new show. Well. Which is going to be in. And Green on Theatre, Letterkenny, Saturday the 7th of January 2023. Tickets 30 euro at com. And now the Highland weather. Brought to you by Shop LK. An accumulation of Christmas shoppers will descend on Letterkenny this December. See shoplk.ie or like us on Facebook. OK, so today will be dry with a mix of cloudy periods and sunny spells. Highest temperatures of 8 to 9 degrees with light east to south east uh, breezes. Now, just uh, our phones have, have become very busy, OK? So um, we appreciate uh, all of you calling. Don't be looking at 11 o'clock thinking what's going on. If you've, uh, if we've said to you that we will call you back, right, uh, even if we have to delay the draw by 10 or 15 minutes, we will call you back. So I don't want anyone out there feeling uh, anxious. We'll get you sorted, OK? Um, a caller says that we were chatting to Michael McClafferty yesterday about uh, his comments he made publicly about uh, an overemphasis on Ukrainians at the expense of Irish really is effectively what the headline read anyway. Greg, it's the amount it's costing for Ukrainians. How come this money is available and no money for the Irish who are paying uh, for all? Greg, stop being so hateful. Many people are of the same opinion as Michael. Now, we, we, already on social media, it's got to the point where you can't have a discussion or an exchange of views because you get shut down or cancelled or blocked or whatever it is here. What we try and do in this program is allow people to have their views, tease it out, different people with different point of views. There's lots of people of a very similar view to Michael. The one problem with your message is, and I don't want to be preachy, but it's a fact, it's not that the money is being taken from housing Irish and being spent to house Ukrainians. It's that the government is focused on housing Ukrainians, but does not share seemingly the same focus on housing homeless here. Their housing for all plan is not working as it should. Uh, so it's not that resources are being taken from the Irish in inverted commas and being used to support Ukrainians. It's that the money is being thrown at that problem. But you heard the conversation earlier on about uh, a dozen or so, probably many more families who need emergency accommodation because their houses are unsafe to live in, right? It's not that there's no money. It's not like, oh, we can't help them because there's no money. It's the will. It's someone saying, right, this is unacceptable. We need to fix this. And if there were no Ukrainians in this country, I assure you, if there were no Ukrainians in this sh in this country, still those people would be in those unsafe homes. Right, uh, Laura joins us. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Greg. Lovely to speak to you. Right, OK. Um, there's uh, these Xeon lights, are they called? LED lights that some cars have? Yeah. Uh, what do you think of them? Yeah. Oh... Um, they are they're just too bright. That's what I think of them. Because I'll tell you why. Driving at night in the countryside, which I do quite often, the the bright lights are on automatic on most of these cars, mm -hmm. and they just don't dim. They don't dim, so you're blinded, and they're so white. I think, too, uh, a lot of people are driving bigger vehicles, SUVs uh, and what have you. And I think when the lights are higher up in those vehicles, I think it's even more of a problem for us sitting in our cars as well. I don't know if that's an observation you've made. Well, well I haven't observed anything like that. But, but what I notice that when these cars are approaching me from a distance, they go they, the lights 
okay, the lights will dim, they go down in a dip, and they brighten up again. Mm. And this is for, and our roads are full of dips. And it's like, a, and if you, if there's a, a, a line of those cars approaching you, it is, it really is blinding. I just wonder why we need the lights so bright. Yeah. I just don't understand why they need to be so bright. I mean, the argument would be, obviously, for the driver of that vehicle, it's fine. They don't have to worry about it. But if you are meeting that traffic, then it's a very different situation altogether. But, but Greg, a a lot of these cars have... uh, You you can have it on automatic Mm -hmm. or you can have it on manual. Mm. And I think most people opt for the automatic. And that doesn't... It doesn't always work to the the person coming towards you. Do you know what I mean? But... uh, that's just all that I wanted to say. And I would just say to those people with, with the newer cars, if they could put the, put the, adjust their, their light to manual so that they, you know, when you're approaching a car, that you can do it yourself. Yeah, you and know? also to a lot and of cars, so uh, a lot of cars will have a little jog wheel where you can actually lower your dips as well. Do you know what I mean? So that would be useful. Yeah. Uh, presumably as well, because even that if they're on dips, some they can, sometimes they can can be quite high. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's okay. a, that's a good idea as well. But, but a lot of people, I only recently found that myself in my own car. I didn't realise it. Yeah, you know, and if it's well. raining as well, but, it's so think, well, horrible. Yes, it's even worse. It is even worse. Yeah, because it limits what you. Old, if you're on a nice on a country story. road, as you say. <laughs> You know, you're worrying about maybe yeah. pedestrians or cyclists on your left, and you're worried about these cars coming at you. It's it's, it's unpleasant. It's not a nice driving experience. Yeah. Okay, Laura. Deers. You know deers, you, aye. That's it, nice exactly. Animals. I forgot about no. that. Right, so what anyway, you're asking anyway, is go manual so and dip the dips yeah. if you can. All right, Laura, yeah. lovely stuff. Thank you so very much indeed. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, right, back to that issue, uh, the conversation we were having with Michael. Stop blaming refugees and people fleeing from a crisis in Ukraine for the housing crisis of homelessness. The government have chosen not to prioritise housing for years. Disgraceful that a public representative should have such an attitude to refugees. Start making better policies for housing for all instead of uh, spreading hate. Greg, shutting down the councillor's argument yet. uh, Each day he comes out with statements like we need to have the conversation. Such mixed messaging hinders people. Uh, I, I really don't understand. Like, I'm not... I appreciate all feedback, okay? But Michael McClafty was given um, eight or nine minutes before 11 o'clock to express all of his views. I never said he was wrong. I put counter views towards him. That's a conversation. That's a debate, right? And they're not, I'm not sitting here expressing my point of views necessarily, right? And then to make sure he had enough time to, to so that he didn't feel like, oh, well, Greg said that and cut me off. We took the news and he came back on again and there was a further, I don't know how long it was, 10 to 12 minutes where uh, Councillor McClafty was able to express his views. I said on a number of occasions that I understood that he is uh, representing the views of a lot of people out there. I'm not um, some highfalutin that lives in a, in a... I'm a normal person on a normal wage living in Donegal as well. So I know what people are talking about. I have the exact same conversations that everyone does. But you have to try and progress the conversation. You can't necessarily just have a group of us that think we should be doing everything and everything's grand and then another group that thinks that's a disgrace, we shouldn't be doing that. We have to come together, have a conversation. And there's not, if you think about it, how we've been having the conversation and, and letting people have their views on this issue for a long time now and think where else that's happening. You know, think some of the national shows where someone might say something to what Michael said and they're shut down and barracked off the radio. I've heard it myself. I heard it happen. That doesn't happen here. We're having a grown up conversation where we have uh, people with different views having a conversation, maybe a meeting of mind, maybe opinions changing, but respectfully, respectfully respecting each other and each other's opinions at the same time. How can that be a bad thing? I think that's progressive in this day and age. I personally think it's a positive thing that people feel that they can come on and express their points of views. Councillor McClafferty knew he could come on and have his view heard. He seemed to change his views somewhat, which is fine, which is good. I don't think it's a weakness or a U-turn. I think that's the whole purpose of constructive conversation. Do we really want to get away from that text? 0866025000, if, if that's what you think. Uh, Michael is 200% right. Our own citizens are lying on the streets um, with no fixed abode. Can't get social welfare. This country is a joke. 
Another. Hi, Greg. Councillor McClafferty is totally right. The government is obviously benefiting from the millions the hotels, etc., are getting to house the Ukrainians. Look at our local council and see who's benefiting there too. Obviously, the government have shares in these hotels. We've done enough as a country, far more than any country of this size. Now it's time to look after our own. Go, Michael. I don't think the government per se are benefiting. I think they're, uh, you, you know, if this situation isn't sorted early next year, and we, we, I think we were the first to highlight before a single person moved into a hotel the impact taking these hotels out of commission for tourists would have on the general local economy. We were having that conversation on this programme, I would say, at least three months before I heard that spoken about nationally. Uh, so I'm not sure where the government makes... Uh, maybe they look good in Europe. I don't know. I don't think they're making any money, per se, uh, off the back of it. Uh, certainly it's a collective. The Nine Till Noon Show with Letterkenny Credit Union. Now offering MyCU Current Account and Debit MasterCard. Bringing full banking features. Delivered with the same local trustworthy service of your credit union. When family and friends come through the door, give them Aldi treats that they'll adore. Danish butter cookies, just two seventy nine. Must have tater party boxes, only four fifty. The ten seventy nine Project Pilsner, one twenty nine. And great value on Quality Street chocolate tubs. Now two for eight euro. They're all worth celebrating, really. Aldi, make Christmas amazing for everyone. Get the facts. Be drink aware. Visit drinkaware.ie. It's the countdown to the biggest Christmas party night in the Northwest. The sensational Joe Dolan Show, Remembering Joe, will rock the Allingham Arms Hotel, Bondurin, on Friday, December 16th in a spectacular cabaret and dinner show. Remembering Joe features the Dolan family and stars five vocalists. It's almost a sellout, so grab your tickets now from the Allingham Arms or book online at showtours.ie. At Life Pharmacy, our focus continues to be your family's health, immunity and well-being. As the months get colder, managing our health gets ever more important. So call in to your local Life Pharmacy for expert advice on vitamins, supplements and everything you need to protect your family and help build immunity. Visit Ward's Life Pharmacy in Johnstown Village and discover a team that's always there to help you. Life Pharmacy. Live better together. This year's Northwest Cancer Charity Ball with special guest Maria O'Callaghan is a sellout and the organising committee would like to thank the local community for being so supportive. Thanks to the generous donations from local businesses, there'll be an exciting raffle and a surprise Christmas shopping spree on the night. Check out the Northwest Cancer Ball's Facebook and Instagram page for more details. The committee look forward to meeting old friends and making new ones on Friday the 2nd at the Silver Tassie for a sparkling night of fun and entertainment in aid of breast cancer research. Joe Gallagher Entertainment presents the world's greatest ABBA show. Direct from Sweden, Arrival, featuring original ABBA musician. Sunday the 8th of January, Mount Erigel Hotel, Letterkenny. Tickets on sale from Hotel Reception and Ticketmaster.ie. Follow us on Facebook, Joe Gallagher Entertainment. Donegal County Council invites you to come along to the Letterkenny Public Information Event to find out about the council-led projects and services in Letterkenny, such as regeneration, roads, recreation, economic development, housing grants and business supports. Drop in to the Radisson Hotel Letterkenny on Monday 5th of December anytime between 2pm and 8pm. Watch the show live now on YouTube, Facebook and at highlandradio.com. All right, the lines are now paused for those wishing to enter the draw and be in with a chance to win uh, one of those uh, three €1,000 prizes. We'd love everyone to be able to get involved, but unfortunately uh, the lines are paused. Uh, they will reopen uh, for that and uh, we hope to get back to everyone who uh, called in the last 50-odd uh, minutes. Look, let's get a news update at 11 o'clock and say good morning, Michaela Clark. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. A defective blocks campaigner says the apparent breakdown in communication between Donegal County Council and government is unacceptable, with affected homeowners all the while living in uninhabitable properties. It comes as the council told protesters outside the county house on Monday that they were awaiting the go-ahead from central government to fast-track grants for emergency accommodation. However, Housing Minister Dar O'Brien confirmed in the Dáil this week that his department was waiting receipt of information from the local authority. The appearance of the anti-Ukraine graffiti just outside Letterkenny has been condemned. A pro-Russian symbol has been spray-painted on a sign in Kilmacrenan in recent days. 
It comes following similar acts of vandalism in Letterkenny last month. The Taoiseach has said Ireland is far from a failed state. During a speech this morning on the foundation of the Irish Free State, Michal Martin hit out at critics who say everything is always doom and gloom. The Taoiseach said much has been achieved over the past 100 years. A Donegal business owner believes despite the county being viewed on a different level to other parts of the country, country that it does offer great potential. Claire McDonough, a member of Letterkenny Chamber, says the people of Donegal should not be punished and that it's up to people residing in the county to stand up and put forward their own valid arguments. The judges in the Regency Hotel murder trial will rule this morning on whether a secretly recorded conversation between Jerry Hotch and Jonathan Dowdle can be allowed into evidence. The court hasn't sat since Tuesday as legal arguments are considered on the admissibility of the contentious piece of evidence that involves 10 hours of recordings between the pair as they drove to Northern Ireland a month after the shooting. A man has been arrested and a quantity of drugs and cash seized in Derry. The 20-year-old was arrested and the drugs seized by officers on patrol in the Prehen area at around 20 past 10 last night. A subsequent search of a property in the Waterside area resulted in the further seizure of suspected Class C drugs and a sum of cash. An Irish water is working to repair a burst water main in the High Road area of Letterkenny. The utility is advising people that supply disruptions that may be experienced. Those are the latest headlines. We'll be back with an update again at 12 noon. All right, thank you very much, Michaela. The Euro Millions Mega Draw is back and it's pretty big. I mean, it's totally massive. This Friday, the Euro Millions jackpot will be a guaranteed 130 million euro. It's just too big to miss. Play responsibly in store, in app, or at lottery.ie. The National Lottery. It could be you. Okay, five past 11 this Friday, the 2nd of December, 2022. Stay tuned. Uh, coming up before 12 o'clock, one of you is going to win. If you enter at our uh, Mega Card Draw competition, one of you is going to win €1,000 on this programme. Fanula's Trombola is in situ. And I imagine there'll be some doors banging as it's, uh, as it's um, filled. I know it's unbelievable. We have to the throw phones, all the numbers in. Yeah, the phones have gone a bit crazy now this morning, so we're doing our best to get a, to accommodate everybody um, as fast and as quickly as we can. But as I said, we can do it over the phone. But don't forget, you can log on. It's a very simple process to do it yourself online. If you have any uh, ability at all in that area, you'll have no problem with it. Um, just I don't want anybody to miss out if they want to be in it. But if if we don't get to you before this draw, don't forget there's two more draws today for a thousand euros on John's and on David's and then of course um, everybody regardless of whether you're in today last week or next week are in for the big draw on the 23rd but in terms of the draw in this hour uh, entries via phone pause just uh, for for the time being um, as we free up some lines to call people back right okay Uh, Michael did I say hello to you uh, well you're saying hello now so hello hello, uh, Greg how How was your week good week did you get your Spotify wrapped do you have Spotify I do not. Well, boring. Do you feel that? <laughs> um, I do, but I don't know how to use it. Uh, technically, they are the competition. Like, you shouldn't really be... How <laughs> not at all. I don't... I, how could unless in the show- Spotify replace the Nine Till Noon show? They don't even talk on it. There right, you maybe go. Maybe there are podcasts, but... It's just, just never the same. Never be the same. Nobody <laughs> should be ever listening to anything that isn't Highland Radio. Yeah, isn't that true. the way? Isn't that our firm belief? That's true. Yeah, I've even course. stopped talking to myself. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Um, right. Okay. Uh, let's start with Quinn Country. Uh, you haven't seen this, Michael. No, I'm aware of it from a lot of comments on social media. I'm interested. Yeah, Fanula said last night you, she was watching it. Have you watched all three episodes? Yes. Is it worth watching? Yes. All right, because I'm going to, when I get an opportunity, watch it and. Mm. Yeah, I actually sat what down and watched it. What does it tell us it. we don't know, Fanula? Well, to be honest now, I I have to say, I kind of walked away from this story back in, uh, I, I thought I would have said I walked away from it in 2009, but apparently no, because it went on and on. And there was bits of it that I remembered. But there was so much of it that I did. Like, what was going on, even as far as 2018, 2019, 
Like, it starts off in the first step. I watched them three in a row, and you can easily do that now. And it uh, works out to be about an hour and 20 minutes or so per for each of them. Um, but the way... When, when you watch them all together, the first one, it kind of gives you a little bit about the rise of... Quinn and who he was and this kind of thing the, and the area that he li- that that it all happened in and what it tries to kind of give you that the like a, sort of almost a political context in that region you know what I mean this would have been a border region there wasn't a lot going on there um, in some ways it was nearly what they would have called back in the 70s as when they used to use the words bandit country and that kind of thing for those type of for those type of regions and it really all that meant was nothing about the people that lived there but it was more that it was neither fish nor fowl you had the RUC on one side not doing anything and then yeah on the other side of the wall then was the Gardaí kind of not going up there much and they had customs and they couldn't go down roads they had to take 15 mile uh yeah, Ranch detours French, in yeah. order, you know, just because there was a bo- because the border happened to be in uh, in the middle of the direction you were going in. And he talks and it's very much focused on Quinn in the first one. And I have to then that kind of I was like, oh, Jesus, don't tell me that RT have paid Quinn to do this documentary. Like, because I mean, well, or I have if, if it is RT that has paid for it. No, we can't mention RT. That's the competition. I know. <laughs> I hate to do it. <laughs> there this you is go. Their television. This is their television. I'm joking. I'm I'm joking. This is I'm their, one I know. Yeah, I think that's a draw. I think this, we'll is, a, this is their television, though, which yeah. in fairness... Can I, know, before you I go on, can me. I ask a question? Because I, I sort of supposed this earlier in the week, having not watched it, right? Yeah. I would have... I wonder if sort of a, a Netflix had got this would have been a bit more juicy. Do you know what I mean? Is oh, it sanitised a little bit because of maybe oh, legal I don't, Actually, I have to say that's the one thing I will say about it. The content will pull you in different directions depending on and I will 100% admit I would be on the negative to the Sean Quinn saga right, okay. from the information that I had going into it but it's actually a really well made documentary okay good okay really good. well made yeah. there's a Sean Quinn does a lot of talking they talk to his wife they have clips from different news things that have happened over the years and all the marches that went on and that kind of thing they speak to a load of the neighbours up there particularly those that were very much for him and they speak to the people who are now running the business, the new management that are in there running the business in the area. Um, so I actually, and and then they have a lot of experts, as in and Fintan O'Toole, different kind of journalists around about the place that would have covered it over the years from a financial, then from the legal, then from... Do you get an understanding as to why he's so popular and popular to the point that you know, I mean, how many of us would people fight a corner for really, really as actively mm. as they do? Was it because he was such a, a a big employer in the area? Do you sort of get a sense of where his... Yeah, you do get a feeling of that. I have to say, though, I, again, because I, you know, shockingly, have an opinion on everything. Yeah. So <laughs> I had an opinion myself going into this and I never really understood what was going on with that because I, I fully understand, you know, like he, he built up massive businesses in that area. He kept people... And more importantly, he kept their children in that area. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? He brought life back to that area with the amount of work when nothing was going in there. When, as I said, it was considered in some ways bandit country. I mean, even you hear Alan Dukes as an XTD talk about how violence is easier for people Mm. in those areas to get in. But it's gone completely insane. I mean, the last thing, which was in 2019, was when some man was kidnapped and assaulted and... I mean, it's just unbelievable. And, and he I was asked directly, um, because I don't think anyone's had an opportunity to do so before, he was act, asked, able to be asked directly, and, and obviously said he hadn't, if he had involvement in that. Well, now, he uh, said he, there was no love lost by him and Mr. Lundy, but he... he yes, he well, it, strongly... starts, it shows their kind of relationship as well through it, because right, okay. Lundy used to, was his protege in many ways. And then it goes all the way through, and right up to, as it finishes, then it lets you know that... Um, it, there was a search warrant issued on Quinn's property earlier this year, Mm -hmm. which again, I hadn't really been paying attention to. But I I suppose for me, it was, I always thought it was, I always remember one story reading about at the time. Do you remember when the court cases came up and everything was coming out and one of the daughters had gotten married and the wedding was three and a half million or something like that and it was the business that paid for the wedding. Mm. And then it came out in one of the things that apparently one of the daughter-in-laws was a um, I'll never forget it. She was a receptionist in a business in Dublin, while also on like a hundred thousand a year for being a receptionist in a business in Russia. 
And I was, we always were like, Jesus, that's a commute. In all fairness <laughs> now. Part time, she was doing She two. was a, an early adopter of remote working. She, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Apparently, there was two jobs, one in Russia, one in Moscow. And what, because he businesses all over the world and they're still, it's still, in some countries, it's still being litigated. It's still not 100% then, sorted. You know, obviously, countries. we are all still paying uh, for, for businesses. And will be until 2035, I think. Yeah. It is. Uh, and, and yet, still, and, and even locally, because his, his lorries would have been, you know, regularly seen around here as well. Uh, even locally, you will get people that will be very, very strong in defense of him, that he's the person that is wronged. So with all that in yeah. mind, did your view in any way change? You went into this, so I haven't switched off from the topic, you know, a decade ago, yeah. having your views. Did your views change throughout the course of the uh, three episodes? Well, you, you, to be honest, I can understand a lot of it in the sense that you, watching him and hearing him talk about it, and and in his, you know, to his credit, he does admit to a lot of things that he did which were wrong and were foolish mm. and, you know, the different things like that. And I wasn't expecting that because, it, again, not knowing the man personally and only seeing bits and that, he does come across as being quite arrogant as his public persona. Um, but I suppose I, you have to, to get to where he well, did. You have to And you have can kind of understand the, you know, the, I mean, the entrepreneurship is about, you know, taking risks. It is about taking a gamble. It is about doing different things. That's how he got to where he was. You know, I think we all probably know somebody in 2008 that had bit off, bit off more than they can chew. Not quite the three and a half billion that he did. But, you know, a lot of a lot mm. of fine and decent people, you know, just got um, in over their heads when everything came to a crash. You know, they didn't see it coming in that. So you can sort of sympathize with them in that. But there is a layer of arrogance there. And like he cannot see the business as not being his business like he owed two and a half billion to the people of Ireland after they took over Anglo Bank and one and a half billion to people in America like investors or whatever from America the uh, sorry it's 2.4 billion here in Ireland and it, and then 1.5 billion to the Americans the Americans are going to get their money back the Irish people w- will never see the two billion they may see the four Mm. And we will be paying 2% on our insurance until 2035. And he still sits at the kitchen table and goes in a massive, massive house and says, I just can't believe they actually tried to take quit that they that they took the group. I can't believe that the jury. We're like, buddy, I feel bad for you. But it was 2.5 billion. Mm. Like, obviously, they were going to come after. You're lucky you have the house. So like, what would you yeah, do? People lost their houses. People lo- it's like some people oh, it's lost. unbelievable. You know what I mean? Yeah. In 2009, 2010, I mean, I know some people that couldn't cope with it whatsoever. And it was terrible tragedies. You know, a lot of terrible stuff yeah, happened. There are people and, that, uh, what you're saying is the people yeah. that are no longer here because uh, yeah. of... The fallout from such a no, situation. because yeah, because they just couldn't cope with yeah, the you exactly. know what I mean with the and then you know and that's what I'm saying is you kind of in one side it, it did give me a little bit more sympathy, but then on the other side as he sits there and I go yeah, buddy, it's hard to you know would he be a, not, uh, would he be sort of like a magnet for people who might be anti-establishment or anti-government? That's he's very much how they a, phrased him in some it. sort of an anti-hero. That's how very much how much how he was kind of phrased in this because to be honest with the documentarians. They were very kind of straight down the road, yeah. but probably were quite not were generous to him in the sense that he, you know, gave spent a lot of time talking and doing a lot of bits and pieces with it. So they probably and he was very much phrased that that's how he was seen, mm. that that's the kind of, that oh and it was very much oh you know when he came up to Dublin, I was like like he lives in Carlow, it's not that far from Dublin, yeah. like but when he came up to Dublin and oh they didn't know what to do with this lad from the country and they this lad from the country. And you're kind of, you know, at some point you're kind of like, and then he constantly talks about himself in the third person, which is enough. To really? Get you, I, get that you. would be, a, that's enough yes. for me. I don't care yeah. about the anything else. They're very, they're very hard on Sean Quinn. Can't believe they took the Quinn group from Sean Quinn. <laughs> Coming from Sean Quinn, so, you're kind of like, ah, buddy. All things considered, what, uh, what do you give a program it's, like I have to say, ten? it's definitely worth the watch. Yeah. And I think no matter what side you fall on, it's definitely worth the watch. But And I would say, again, no matter what side you fall on, it's, going to bring you closer if not to the other side then at least the middle on it okay, <laughs> because right. it's a lot of information well that I personally didn't have because I don't think anybody 
like we kind of all picked it up by well I would assume but I think also too with the involvement of Quinn in it it gives them a little bit more latitude to bring other bits of information into it because once they can ask him a question directly about something it kind of widens the parameters of what they can talk about and what allegations they can uh, it does, make and it, it's, if he's got an opportunity to, honest, I, it, to it's very enter- and it is an entertaining documentary yeah. it's a well done documentary you'll find the time flies through it it doesn't feel like it's that length whatsoever there's a lot of just really, there's a lot of stuff happening. All right, okay. Things went a bit crazy down there. That's uh, Quinn's Country, which is available on the, Quinn Country, sorry, which is available on the RTE player now. I'm sure they'll yep. broadcast and, it again um, at some And it's point. also on like Sky, you can download it all together. Is it really and, on Sky? Yeah, and it's unusual for Sky yeah. to take the RTE on stuff. Their actual documentary channel or no it's on you can just uh, because RT is one of their channels it's very unusual for them to actually have the programmes that RT make that you can download and watch so you can watch it through Sky watch it through your player and I'm sure they're going to repeat it because it's really getting a lot of press it's getting a lot of attention so well it's making headlines and you don't often get that okay um Michael, I'm, I'm probably going to watch it. Yeah, I'm going to watch it as well. Okay. Um, there's a lot of interest on Twitter and it's interesting to see the reactions to it. Pretty much in line with what Vanilla was saying, but yeah. it, it does seem to be something people I did things. think it was going to be the hot, hot topic on Twitter, mm. but it wasn't quite... And, maybe, and obviously it all depends on who you follow and who you interact with, but it didn't have as much okay. traction on that platform that I was expecting it to. Yeah. But, but as I say, I be... might not be exposed to the people yeah. that are talking about it. Plus, Twitter is very much... An echo uh, chamber? <laughs> it can be a little bit. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. As in when you think about it, like the percentage of people on the people Very few don't people really, in this country use it, Twitter. Yeah, it's not as... And it's mostly di- pe- uh, professional journalists, professional people in the news. Well, there's different are, cohorts of, yeah, of journalists they, on it because yeah. there's journalists like me, right, then who try and uh, give information to the people. Mm-hmm. But then I am um, pond food or, or fish food for nationalist journalists who just see us me, other regional journalists, as a source of information. Right. Oh, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Really. So then what you find like, yourself going is, that's well, should I bother s- tweeting this? Because yeah. really all I'm doing is making other people's yeah. lives a bit easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that no, makes no, sense, that makes right. sense. So if you want something to get traction, I suppose it's not a bad national platform. All right, mm. let's, uh, we'll be uh, seeing what Michael's been watching after these. The Nine Till Noon Show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union. Seasonal loans now available for Christmas. Apply online or via our app today and get your loan transferred directly to your current account. Hi, Dad. Just popping on to say hi, love. How did you manage to video call? I'm a bit of a computer whiz these days. I can see that. And it's not just video calls. With Hi Digital's free online course, Paddy also learned to do the grocery shopping. And you can too. So how are you, Dad? Hang on, I have a very funny gift to send you. Or is it Jif? Learn essential online skills today at highdigital.ie. Brought to you by Vodafone Ireland Foundation, Active Retirement Ireland and Alone. Vodafone, together we can. Live is a different experience with every performance at over 60 Arts Council funded venues across Ireland. Experience live performance in your area. Book that ticket today. Hashtag Live is funded by the Arts Council. At Centra this week, choose from our amazing mega deals like selected coffee and chocolates, five euro each. Centra fresh Irish beef round roast one kilo, only nine euro. And Brancot Estate Sauvignon Blanc, only nine euro. Celebrate Christmas, choose Centra. Centra, live every day. Enjoy golf sensibly. Crisp mornings, crunchy leaves, cosy jumpers. Wintertime can be magical. But it's also the time of year when we're most at risk of catching the flu. At your local pharmacy, children aged 2 to 17 can now get vaccinated for free with just a simple nasal spray. Don't let the flu stop you from enjoying your time together. Get your whole family vaccinated against the flu today. Your local community pharmacy, always here for you. Brought to you by the Irish Pharmacy Union. Sometimes it's just bad luck, but sometimes it's negligence. From minor bumps to life-changing injury, every accident has a story. Time to call McElhenney and Associates. They'll assess the situation, advise on solutions, and lead the way if any litigation is to follow. From motor accidents and workplace accidents to slips, trips and falls, call today on 074-917-5989 or find us online. Let's get you started on the road to recovery. McElhenney and Associates Solicitors, Stranorler. How can we help? 
In contentious business, a solicitor may not calculate fees or other charges as a percentage or proportion of any award or settlement. For all your home heating needs, oil, gas and solid fuels, National Fuels, Pierce Road, Letterkenny. 9113895. National Fuels, bringing you the time at... The time is precisely 21 minutes past 11. All right, Michael Letty's in with us as well as is uh, Fanula, Fanula Rabbit. And thank you all, to all of you uh, listening and watching the programme today. Get involved in the conversation. 0860 25,000. Tell us what you're doing for fun, how you're entertaining yourself uh, this weather. Uh, five days at Memorial is on Apple. Yes, it's on Apple. And again, uh, together with um, Blackbird, which is another Apple show, it's real prestige, top-tier drama. Again, it's also a true story, also based on a book. Um, a I'm book. A book. You really don't waste any of those O's, do you? <laughs> um, I'm going to ignore you. So basically, uh, it's a true story. It's uh, Hurricane Katrina. And it's, ah. yeah, it's New Orleans. And again, uh, I seem to be drawn to uh, shows like Treme about this era and stuff that happened uh, in 2005 when Hurricane Katrina hit the city. And then in the aftermath, there was widespread flooding and there was rioting and basically the city was kind of abandoned by the government, uh, local government and national government. A lot of people uh, feel very bad about that and have felt very bad about that for decades. And there's a lot of investigations. This story, which is absolutely unbelievable, I'm five episodes into the eight episodes, a hospital was cut off for five days in the middle of this. First five episodes I've seen, each one focusing on a different day. And then three days, three episodes then focus on the aftermath and the investigation. This is gruelling television. Yeah, it's hard to that. watch. There's not much light here. This no, is... there's not much light in this at all. None. Zero. Zilch. Vera Famiga, a lot of people will know from the Conjuring movies, amongst other things. Julie Ann Emery, who I want to marry when I grow up. I adore that woman. She's on Bosch. She's on Handmaid's Tale. She was on Better Call Saul. She just can't do a wrong move. And she is superb in this. The episode I watched, episode five, you're during the week she was incredible she had a, she had the pivotal scene at the end of it um, basically you're watching the same thing over and over again but it gets increasingly distressing to watch uh, early on the electricity is cut off the food is destroyed in the basement they get like 15 feet of water they have to move upstairs in the hospital they're completely cut off um, it's the, the storm was over it became really warm and really humid it's a nightmarish scenario and it is on many levels it's horrific it's horrific to see how quickly everything fell apart in a 21st century hospital that within 24 between 48 72 hours they were literally they had no way to monitor people so, look yeah, after so people. in right so once the storm was cleared yes. right okay i mean this is a hospital within a state within a a, 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 a uni, metropolitan uni, uni huge, of states, right? huge yeah so why was like this? Why was everything not like, scrambled immediately? Airlift people away to the million, thousands of other hospitals around the place. Absolutely agree. There, these are the questions that people have been asking for years, and the investigations. For whatever reason, the government was slow to respond. They didn't take things seriously in New Orleans. The corporation that owned the hospital, and within that building, there was actually two. The corporation was kind of sitting back, ignoring phone calls and emails. We focus on one guy in corporate headquarters. I think they're in Texas somewhere. He was trying to respond, but his bosses were saying, no, leave that. The National Guard will take care of it. So, And from the a point is made up early on that there's no profit for the corporation in doing anything and sending helicopters in in those first 48 hours. That's a money-losing proposition. And in America in particular, whatever about the rest of the world, it's all about the bottom line. If you're running a hospital, it's all about profit, profit, profit. If your hospital is flooded and people need to be getting out, you don't pay. For, so you what might be a shocking attitude in this country? It's it's, oh. it's, it's, it's accepted as the norm then in yeah. the United States. Was and, the the I, is the demographic of the state a factor in any of this? Um, it, it yes is the short answer. I think it's a complex question, but yes, uh, there is a great feeling that. Possibly the Bush administration didn't respond as quickly as they could have because these were undesirable people. They tended to be poorer people. They tended to be black communities that were affected. And that's predominantly the makeup of the city. And that's something that does come up occasionally in this. It came up much more in Treme when I was watching that show, the HBO show from years ago. Mm. But I'll tell you, and this is something that struck with me in episode five, 
and it does get surreal and it gets increasingly surreal for days they were stuck for days some helicopters went Coast Guard ignored them at certain times they were desperately trying to get patients out then there was a switch the police arrived in on the fifth day I had to look this up because I couldn't believe it was true and I ended up getting into a conversation with a guy on Twitter who knows the story better than me when the police arrived, they began to accuse... There were still 2,000 people in the hospital at that stage because they had taken in people in the community. They told people they were trespassing. They told people they had to get out of that building by 5 o'clock that day. They gave them four hours to get out. They prepared... And they were prepared to drag people away, a woman dragged away from her dying mother in a hospital bed. And that's where things got really ugly because doctors were in a position where they had to discuss euthanasia because they were being forced by the police of New Orleans to leave the building by five o'clock that day and if anybody couldn't be moved they were being left to their own devices and 45 people died and that's where the rest of the investigation is going to come and what I found really disturbing and upsetting watching this other night was that these doctors and nurses were quite euphemistic about they weren't using the word euthanasia they were talking about making people comfortable doing what's necessary talking on familiar language oh yeah so the people at the top and I don't think there's any bad people in that hospital from what I can gather, but they were making bad decisions. But they were sort of leaving it over to their underlings to make the decision. Mm. Nothing was being made perfectly crystal clear. So people were walking out of meetings going, am I supposed to do what I think I'm supposed yeah. to do? It's incredible television. It's well worth watching. I wouldn't say it was easy to watch because you know how true it is. But if you want to watch something that's an important story and the performances, again, Julianne Emery... Uh, I hope she gets every award going in award season. Same with Vera Famiga, normally Cherry the Jones. Kiss of death from you, if you say that. Cherry <laughs> Jones from I missed that. It's normally the kiss of death for an actor if you if you suggest. That <laughs> Cherry you Jones, awards. who was the president on Twenty Four for mm. one of the later seasons, mm-hmm. she's the hospital administrator. Robert Pine is in it. Anyone who grew up like myself watching Chips, Captain Gertrude, who's Chris Pine's father. Great to see. Ro- the man looks the same as he did as he did on chips back in the 70s. He's the elder statesman of the hospital. He's got a heart of gold. So there's there's moments where they have to push him aside so he doesn't really know what's yeah. what's happening. Yeah. It's difficult to watch. I don't think I'm going to watch it from what you've said. I it's, just, I just, I, it's hard. You know, yeah, it's a it's bit hard. like there was a show with the... the I, I don't know. It was about COVID. It was uh, not the Boris Johnson one, but I think the... Was it an American one? No, no. no British. No. I'll, I'll, British I'll, I'll remember it in a moment. Uh, but I just, I just well, don't I'd say think one I'm thing. Be, I'm watching the two of these back. But I'm kind back. of enjoying the fact oh, that it's had such an impact oh, on yeah. you. But I just don't. Oh, think it's I'm getting going nothing to be. but amazing reviews. Oh like, yeah. And people keep telling me, oh, you need to watch. You it. Need, you to need to watch, watch it. Yeah. It. So, I'm watching it in Blackbird like back to back, and I'm I'm one episode left of Blackbird. Blackbird is also hard watching. It's so dark. So I watched the two of them back to back on a Wednesday. Then I went to the kitchen and sit in silence and try and figure out how I'm going to get that out of my head for because they're heavy viewing, but they're good, good yeah. viewing. Is that good your viewing. type of program, Fanula? Would you be inclined? No, I, well, I, I watched Tremé when it came out and yeah. I found it very hard to watch. It was oh, I, yeah. in the sense that it was oh. amazingly done and made and Love everything. That show. Yeah. But it's very difficult to watch because as, as Michael said, from the Tremé one, I'm assuming it's the same in this. You know, these people weren't bad people. And no. in fairness to them, when they were talking about euthanizing, it was, in some ways, the best medical decision, given the circumstances that everybody found themselves in. It's still, in a, it's, it is horrendous to uh, even uh, think, to about think that. Yeah. that would, yeah. Exactly. It's just like, to actually think that in a modern country, in a modern world, that that would even be something that we'd ever have yeah. to yeah. contemplate. Yeah. And, and it's worth it. saying... I think to somebody go, got arrested me, what, for it as oh, well. Oh, I think, yeah, that's was, where the show is heading. Yeah, there was court but cases and stuff. One of the cases, I mean, because I, I had to just Google one of the real... But I, when somebody goes in for a relatively simple procedure, these are not long-term care mm-hmm. patients, but somebody goes in, procedure, Katrina happens, they can't move for a few days, and that person didn't make it into the hospital, yeah. and that's horrific. All right, yeah. uh, Co. Uh, that is five days at Memorial Memorial Hospital, obviously. Yes, uh, and it's available for you it's on, on Apple. Apple, Apple, which many of you uh, who persist with the iPhone might get for free as part of any package. Someone wants to know uh, the Chosen. There's only eight episodes on Netflix. Where else are they being aired? You've got a, a wee thing that you can find that out. I can find you? that out off yeah, just okay. watch. You'll tell me that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what we'll do is we'll find that out for you. Yep. Uh, during the break. Keep your contacts coming in to us. Good morning to Ursula uh, watching this morning as well. And good morning, Kathleen and uh, Marie and uh, all of you who've uh, said hello with her. I didn't get to all of you, but thank you so much for uh, watching and your involvement. Okay, in the next uh, 29 minutes, one of you 
who uh, has uh, entered the draw to win a brand new 30,000 euro Nissan Duke car. Is that still on show down in the shopping centre? It is, is yeah. It? Okay. Yeah, it looks amazing. All it right. is on show in the middle of the shopping centre. So while you're down there doing your shopping. You love it. So they're great at that point because they're so shiny the 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 tires are still do you know that yeah yeah like oh yeah no rubber? it does like the lights are just bouncing you know I mean? off it yeah <laughs> it's, it's it uh, looks amazing yeah it looks, it looks fantastic all right okay so we're going to give one of you who entered that a thousand euro the trombola is uh loaded and uh, ready to go the nine till noon show is brought to you by letter kenny credit union offering low rate car loans with fast approval apply online at letterkennycu.ie or in office today Whatever you want this Christmas, you'll find joy for all at Boots. We've amazing deals and exclusive star gifts, including better than half price on Soap and Glory and Estee Lauder. And with more star gifts than ever before, online and in store, you can save on something special for everyone. Selected stores and boots.ie subject to availability. Offer ends 24th December. At Joe McGee Butchers, we have all your needs to make this Christmas dinner extra special. So, if it's a fresh whole turkey, a turkey breast fillet in a backpack cooking bag with a cooking pop-up timer, a ham joint or a succulent dry-aged sirloin steak, then call in to Joe McGee Butchers at Glencar Shopping Centre and the Letterkenny Shopping Centre, where we have Christmas all wrapped up for you. Suckler Cow Destocking recommended to Minister. For more in this week's Irish Farmers Journal, here's Paul Mooney. We reveal details of proposed scheme for suckler farmers to wind down or get out. Veterinary medicine and fertiliser changes hit legal roadblock. What you need to know about the new TB testing rules. Plus calls for farmers to be paid two and a half thousand euros per hectare for re-wetting. And in Irish country living, don't miss your free 36-page Festa food magazine. Inside this week's Irish Farmers Journal, you can afford to miss it. At Ulster Bank, we have now begun to close current and deposit accounts. At this time, if your notice period and your deadline has passed, your account is now queued for closure. You must take action now. If you are still relying on your personal or business bank account and in need of support, please contact us immediately. Visit ulsterbank.ie, your local branch, or call 0818-210-260. Call costs may vary and calls from mobiles may not be free. Ulster Bank Ireland DAC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. The Abbey Hotel in conjunction with Mike Denver and his band, Philomena Begley, Brendan and Emily Shine, followed by Conor O'Donnell, will host an afternoon of dancing from 4 till 7 p.m. This Sunday, 4th of December, in aid of the Chrysler Community Support Fund. All artists are performing for free, as all funds raised will go directly to the charity. Tickets are available online at the Abbey Hotel reception and also at the door. All right, lots of excitement uh, coming up uh, for you here on Highland Radio. It's all it is for you, uh, really. That's why we do it. It's not for our own entertainment. Uh, coming up to Christmas, we've got uh, some exciting things to announce and some uh, great giveaways. And uh, of course, we're going to be giving away a car. And today, we're going to be giving away a uh, thousand euro. But um, before we get back to looking at uh, what we're looking at, um, as I say. We're throwing everything at it this Christmas, aren't we? It's going to be good fun. Yeah, no, well, that's the plan anyway. So we've a load of things to announce in the coming weeks of different competitions. At the moment now, the um, Home for Christmas competition is closed and we're just working out uh, the winners of that. And then we have the um, colouring competition, which is running. We've got, uh, love it, love it, love it. We'll talk about that before the end of the I show. know, we'll I've asked Santi for new crayons and everything. Yay. It's very exciting. Um, so we've got that We've got that going on. We have the car draw that's happening as well. And we have a lot of stuff that we have planned. Oh, Monday night sessions. I'm gonna, he'll, I promised Jimmy and Paul that we'd give it a mention. Monday night sessions are holding their live Christmas show on the 19th of December in Blake's Bar and is it, it's open is it to the public. recorded live or actually being broadcast live Broadcast from live, wow, okay. yeah, broadcast live with live music. I think they've got about 10 acts. Mm, I don't so, know. So gonna, brilliant. Yeah, awesome acts. Um, so that's happening on the 19th of December. So um, anybody that wants to come down to that, that'll be um, right, open be to the public fun, as well. A hundred percent, yeah. I'm hoping to be around to go like that. Exactly. There's not many things like that where you get multiple artists and it's live for radio and stuff. It'll be good fun. Yeah. Will you go, Michael? 19th, yeah, I... I love the way you go, what am I doing? Am I on stage? you every day between now and Christmas, stop pretending otherwise. I feel like I might be on stage that night. Yeah, right. I actually might. 
I've seen you rehearse. <laughs> so I won't, I won't be there. There's no um, room for truth on, on, on the 9 to 11 show. Stop being nine honest. 9 to 11. Or yeah. 9, uh, Literally 20 9 to 12. 9 to 12, yeah. I um, want to say happy birthday to Jeffy who's listening to the show this morning and also to some other comments. My sister lived in New Orleans and lost her home <gasps> in Hurricane oh, Katrina. So yeah. it goes to show how... Yeah, I know. You know, close touched, this is. Yeah, yeah. Um, five days at Memorial says a caller. It's a slow burner, a it harrowing is. story. A slow mm. burner is a good way to put it, Janet. It yeah. is harrowing. Yeah. I, I might. I just. I just. I kind of know in my heart. Okay. I think you'd narrative. enjoy it, but I don't know if it's Christmas viewing. Yeah, I, I'm I too to. Christmassy at the moment. Mm. To be. I know what you mean. Which is terrible um, considering it's a real If Lindsay Lohan was in it. Well, you well, haven't watched that film yet, have you? I'm gonna. Well, you said that I hear good things about it, though. Three weeks now. I hear good oh. things about it. Not from Move Fanula. From Not Lohan. from Fanula. Move from Lindsay Lohan into Freddie Prince Jr. There's another guy that's after doing a Christmas movie for Netflix and he should have stayed at home. Right. Have you seen it? I yeah. heard it was good. You both... Uh, no... The theatre. We went. To, we had a good yes. time at the theatre. Oh yeah, we did. talk to us about that. We did. Yeah. This is all things on stage, on telly, on big screen. We're all over the place. This was yeah. opera, was it? Yes. Uh, we actually uh, we went to the theatre twice this twice week. Twice this weekend. Yeah. Once together and then <laughs> once separately. <laughs> once we well, fell out the first time. I, yeah. no, I, I, I forgot to pick him up. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. You uh, went to the theatre scheduled with him. But yes. Went on your own. Yeah, I forgot to pick him up. I, I, I not take, notice an empty seat? I, I I know, no, she didn't. I thought he was going to be there. I confused was. the matters by sending a text message which said, see you at my house at 7.30. Oh, by wow. including 7.30 and my house, I immediately yeah, caused Fanula yeah, to think, course. he's meeting me at the theatre at 8. Yeah, she was off the trail then. Completely. I know, yeah, it's like so two minutes stage. I'm like, where are Literally. <laughs> literally two minutes stage. And, he checks back in and my did kitchen. you just stay at home in a huff or make your own way? Cried. Home I took my mug of tea, I threw it against the kitchen wall. <laughs> Must clean that up when I get home. <laughs> Anyways, so we had yes, yeah, so we've uh, so we've been to the cinema a lot separately and together. But last um, oh. Saturday night, we went to see opera. Um, an opera. My first ever opera. I was nervous going in because I really felt, oh god, this is going to do. Because I have tried the modern dance, and to be honest, I, people love it, but it's not for but me. But not while watching the opera, you didn't. Um, so I know I was nervous sat about still. going to the opera uh, <laughs> to see whether or not I would like it. And we went to see Don Ca- P- Pascale, Pascale, Pascale. Pascale. and uh, is, it was is this done by one the person. Sorry, is, is this uh, uh, so ignorant? No, is no, this okay. an individual performing or is this good? Qu- no, that's a, a good question. No, it's a story. A, a it's story. a play. It's a play. Yeah, it's yeah. a several cast people. It's okay. no. Yeah, that's a fair question. Are they all uh, operas operating and singing? They are yeah. all. Okay. Oh, are. And, they, and there's no uh, no real speaking in it. There's not a lot of speaking okay. in it. It's nearly all. So even when they're talking, they're singing nearly. Uh-huh. So that's why I My was favorites. like, oh, I don't know. Um, I managed Les Mis, but I wasn't sure if I was going to manage this. But actually, we went. It was done by the National Opera um, uh, Theatre. And they're touring now. This is what they're trying to do. That was their first night, first open day. Um, I would say it's because in the UK and things like that, there's been a massive reduction in the government spend on the likes of opera and things like that. And it's all about the fact of whether or not it's actually for the general public. And that's where I would have to say, and that's what the build-up is, I actually really enjoyed it. It was very light. Sorry, are you classing yourself amongst the general public? Yes, 100%. <laughs> well, I would have always... I would have I, I always kind You're of too thought, busy oh. to even pick up a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I was she could work. have sent one of her people to do it. Of course, I was at yeah. Work. I was at work. I left work and went straight to the opera. Uh, no, it went straight to the other show. But this one was... What? We we went to this and um, I, I have to this say... This one we I, saw together, yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I was amazed that I enjoyed it because I have to say I always kind of thought opera was, you know, it's nearly always in Italian. Mm. It's a little bit too highbrow and I didn't think, you know, ugh, would I sit there through it all? And actually it was really enjoyable. Hugely enjoyable, yeah. Yeah, it was very kind of light and airy. And the story is easy to track and follow. Even yeah, it was. Like and they this, had yeah. subtitles, which is the text of the entire story is projected onto screen or shown on two large like screens. Sounds like my worst nightmare. And you can read it. Uh, and this is, this is my ignorance. This is yeah, no reflection yeah, on the enough. performance. But it's, it's definitely worth going. But my whole thing about this is this one is over now because they only came down for one show. Ah. And the reason why we wanted that I wanted to bring it up was because they're coming back again. 
And they're going to be back yeah. with Tutti Con... Casi Fun Tutti on, in April, Cosi May. Yeah. Con Tutti, there yeah. you go. Uh, it, and this is going to be one that people will actually know some of the music mm. from because some of the music from that has actually become kind of popularised. Mm. See, I like Pavarotti. Yeah, oh, uh, I saw him in concert I, I, once. I've sat and watched Amazing. his concerts on, you know, I, I do like it and I like mm. other... It's just yeah. the combination Andrea Botelli, of, beautiful. Andrea Botelli is just absolutely... You see, weirdly, yeah. Greg might enjoy it. You might enjoy it too. Well, you see, this really, is... this is I, this was a funny one but this the days of me rejecting something as if oh I'm never doing that are, are over mm. yeah. so you know what I mean I would be whilst I'll say it sounds like my worst nightmare you might I I am so open to go yeah and yeah. have my views well, changed I, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of at that stage of my life now that's what I kind of wanted to say to people was go and see you know keep an eye out for this they haven't got the exact dates, but they're touring May, June. Mm. And Letter Kenny is on their list of touring because we checked at the theatre to see when they come back. I definitely think it's something people go and see and see how you think about it. And particularly that'll be an easy one because, as I said, some of the music people will even yeah. recognise in it. And don't now, sort of put, say, it's not for me. Like, uh, it's exactly. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. you need to open yeah. yourself up to open it. Open yourself to it, yeah. Because, like, now, I will say one thing. Michael had read up about it beforehand and he had given me kind of a rough... Uh, synopsis. synopsis of mm. what it was about mm. and that did make it easier then because e- even though you know because it's very hard to be reading and even though mm. even when they're reading it's not line for line it's more kind of giving you this is what it is and then six lines later it's still the same line up you know yeah. what I mean it's like oh the argument began or oh yeah, she was you. mad yeah. you know and the, and the, so it's not like word for word that they translate it's just to kind of keep you in the whole feeling of it but the singing was absolutely stunning I can one, of the, stunning. one of the gentlemen in it is from um, Northern Ireland yeah. he was he amazing was, he was in brilliant it. and yeah. I was like well there you go there's a, there's a thing that you don't think when you're he was interviewed up. in the programme as well there was like a five or six page interview with him which yeah. was really about good about how he got into really it and that good. kind of thing really but it's not something that you kind of automatically think of become an opera singer mm. the, one of the main characters in it then as well was a, a a gentleman from I think the Congo originally or something like that, but he had only just he studied engineering in school That's and right, had an yeah. interest in but singing, just was really and good suddenly singing. did an yeah, opera, yeah. and you're like he was amazing, amazing. Um, so it's just it's really worth going to see, and it's on. Um, then, uh, it's on as I said, May June, and then the one that we went separately. <laughs> to I'll pull your mic down for this one, Michael. You won't, you won't need it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he will, he will. He went to see this. Was uh, the Calendar the Girls Musical. Kenny Musical and Drama Society have Calendar Girls on at the moment. And okay. there's two more nights left tonight and tomorrow night. Yes. And um, they did a great job of it. Fabulous, yeah. Not mad about the show, but as in the actual show that wasn't written by them, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's not really, um, I don't know. The film, kind of, you mean? The, it, 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 the, well, the film was also made into a musical. Okay. So what it is is there's a bit of talking and then there's all these songs kind of dropped into it. But they're not very... Like it's a rewriting and the original stage play has been Gary Barlow did all the songs for this and they've basically taken oh the God. same story but kind of it's... Yeah, it's... it's, it's I normally it's, love everything that Gary Barlow does. I don't like these ones. They, they, to be honest, uh, the women that are in it and fantastic. the gentlemen that are in it are absolutely they fantastic. They are amazing, yeah. The talent that's in this part of the world is absolutely fantastic. The loads of people were falling about themselves laughing. And the crowd's just not particularly in my crowd of tea yeah. what it is. It, yeah. But they were, the crowd, uh, the audience were falling about themselves. The women are unbelievably brave. Yes. And if anybody knows the story of Calendar Girls, they'll realise that it's about these women who decide to do a, a tasteful nude calendar in order to raise funds. Um, uh, for um, a cancer society cancer, yeah. in the UK because one of them has lost their husband to cancer and uh, the women on the stage here in Letterkenny are equally as brave and we will leave it at that mm. it's well worth going to see you were selling Greg, the- Greg might be old enough to be allowed to see something like this yeah it's it's definitely well now hold on you make sure you don't promise something that's not delivered <laughs> now at this point no 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 it's all ta- it's <laughs> a know, very it's tastefully, very tastefully done. done but yeah. I have to say but it's still, like, I mean, I mean it's, these are just regular women yeah, like, and it's like right you know yeah. fair, that's what I mean is in fair play to them they so Calendar Girls having a lot, they're clearly having a lot of fun up there like they mm. clearly are like, Calendar Girls is tonight and tomorrow is it? tomorrow night and yeah the, yeah. the last two shows are tonight and tomorrow night I would if people are interested get rid of a shout but I would nearly sh- be sure they're both sold out at this right, stage okay. but no, well, I, I let don't take that as red if you yeah, really, yeah. you know but I'm sure check the box office yeah, even if it's yeah. a cancellation but it has it's like I mean it was the night the night that I eventually did get to see it 
he said slowly, looking across the microphone. There was, I think, I, I was, I was, I think I saw like ten empty seats in front of me. Like you know, I, I was, at, I was sitting in the back the row. Theater, I didn't so have I've, a proper seat. With a few things that I've noticed, booking. I'm not saying it's the case there. Is that you book a seat right, and there's one seat in between in one row and one in another? Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, that happened. Yeah, and there must be a natural. Uh, amount that they sacrifice because there's very few people are going to go last minute on their own to something. I think exactly. I'm not saying you know I yeah. just noticed that in, in in the forum and and stuff but that there are little, little single pockets. Seat, yeah, that's but, what it was. Yeah. But people book a seat and you can't say squeeze up there. No, you know, that sort of way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'd say there's, there's one an, left somewhere in the middle. There's yeah, a natural yeah. sort of loss. I was in the back row watching. Come here, I just like, want to remind people the draw is coming up very very shortly. We delayed it slightly to make sure everyone. Uh, that wanted to be involved was involved. So please bear with us. We'll be pulling out a ticket for a thousand euro very, very shortly. Stay right where you are. I beg your pardon, Mike. No, I was going to say, I was looking, I could see a seat, like a random seat, and I was thinking to myself, who's waiting in their kitchen for Fanula, even yeah. as I sit here? Is who's it possible? Waiting? You say there were 10 empty person. seats. Is it possible that 10 friends let down 10 other Possibly. friends? Yeah, it's possible. You're stretching who do it that? to call what us kind? friends, aren't you? I mean, what I've never said... Well, as close as you can possibly I've never said kind of we're friends. That's what kind it. of person? And again, I say... I muddied the water by clearly saying 7.30 at well, my you've house. You've made that point. I mean, yeah. uh, it's we too ambiguous. Cut, we too can ambiguous. cut that clip for you. You can too make ambiguous. it your ringtone. <laughs> I can make that my ringtone. Listen, tone. thanks very much. Uh, just to let you know, by the way, that uh, yesterday we launched our 12 Days of Christmas <laughs> Uh, and we are back today. Just click on the deal of your choice on highlandradio.com. You'll see it as soon as you land on the website there. All the information you need to avail of the offer will be there. Our second uh, deal of the 12 is from the Silver Tassie Hotel and Spa. They're offering an amazing uh, afternoon tea followed by their winter essence spa package for two for 209.50 to book simply call the spa 07491 uh, 26251 there's other contact details and uh, you can uh, find all of that information out right now on our website highlandradio.com just click the 12 deals of uh, Christmas. All right, back with more, including that draw for a thousand euro after these. The nine till noon show with Letterkenny Credit Union now offering MyCU current account and debit Mastercard, bringing full banking features delivered with the same local trustworthy service of your credit union. Hello, Dream Inspector. Fifty grand. Got it. Wait, ten winners of fifty grand each every Tuesday and Friday. So every Euro Millions draw till Christmas is guaranteed ten Irish winners of fifty grand each. <laughs> ten Ireland-only raffle winners of fifty thousand euro guaranteed in every Euro Millions draw till Christmas. The National Lottery. It could be you. Play responsibly. Play for fun. All Euro Millions Ireland-only raffle draws until December twenty-third. At Tesco, we're standing up for joy this year. Get the family round the table with Tesco Finest Irish Round Roast, now half price with your Tesco Club card. A great deal, no debate. You might have already demolished your advent calendar, but don't worry. Medium selection boxes are only three for five euro with your Tesco Club card. Plus, save up to 33% off selected wines. No chance these will be re-gifted. We're standing up for joy this Christmas. Tesco. Every little helps. Product subject to availability. Excludes express stores. Enjoy alcohol responsibly. GiveBlood.ie know we can count on you, our community of blood donors, to give blood and to choose to be there for others in their hour of need. Blood donors from Bunkrana should attend the clinic in the Inishone Gateway Hotel on Monday 5th and Tuesday 6th of December. And donors from Carndonna should attend the clinic in the community school in Carndonna on Wednesday 7th and Thursday 8th. Making an appointment is recommended, so call 1-800-731-137 to book your time. New donors are welcome. Visit giveblood.ie to see eligibility and clinic details. It's the countdown to the biggest Christmas party night in the Northwest. The sensational Joe Dolan Show, Remembering Joe, will rock the Allingham Arms Hotel, Bondurin, on Friday, December 16th, in a spectacular cabaret and dinner show. Remembering Joe features the Dolan family and stars five vocalists. It's almost a sellout, so grab your tickets now from the Allingham Arms or book online at showtours.ie. From the smallest shrub to the largest tree in an awkward place, Donnelly Tree Services provide a complete range of tree surgery services. Whether you need to remove a dangerous tree or some nuisance branches, Donnelly Tree Services have the experience and expertise to carry out tree surgery to the highest of professional standards. Call 083 005 Donnelly Tree Services, Donegal. No job is too small, no tree is too tall.
Whatever the weather, Christmas shopping in Letterkenny will brighten your December. The Highland Weather Forecast, brought to you by Shop LK. See shoplk.ie or like us on Facebook. Okie doke, let's look at uh, that weather forecast for today then. I can tell you that it's not too bad, I don't think. Uh, today will be dry with a mix of cloudy periods and sunny spells, highest temps of 8 or 9 degrees with light east to southeast uh, breezes. Right, okay, it is that time now. Uh, thank you, by the way, to all of you who entered the mega car draw. This is just one part of it today. We're giving away three thousand euro today, a thousand around about now, a uh, thousand on uh, around the northwest with John Breslin, and also a thousand on uh, Jive Time with uh, David. So all of you who entered up until now, uh, unless you called in after I said that we were pausing it for today's draw, just to make sure everyone knows exactly where we're at. These are all in this uh, this trombola, which is um, right there. Right, okay. I've, uh, by the way, I've watched Fanula rotate it. Are you going to risk a live on-air rotation? Yeah. Because it is quite no, heavy. I to rotate my trombola. Right, go for it. Then. I'm obsessed with this trombola. Okay. Well, though the weight of it now is getting a little bit much. Yep. That's because yeah. of the quality materials in it, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> right, it's okay, beautiful. so... Uh, for those of you watching across our socials, YouTube, Highland Radio Ireland, of course, and on our Facebook pages and on our website, highlandradio.com. For those of you who are not, Fanula is about to open the trombola. She's going to look okay. away from the hole. She's going to place her hand down. inside and she's reaching and she's arms are just about long enough. No more. <laughs> just about, and a number is coming she's, out. I'm not a large woman. And well. it's on this camera over here yeah, to your left. It is. Five, eight, nine. One, five, eight, nine, one. Just so Katie, there, so she can see it. All right. So, five, eight, nine, one. You have just won one thousand pounds. We're retaining the ticket for now, just to uh, we cross reference it with names yeah. and stuff, and then it will be going back in the draw drum, the trombola, and you could then go on to win uh, one. Yeah. Sorry, a thirty thousand euro Nissan Juke car. Uh, which is available for you to view if you're in Letterkenny in the Letterkenny Shopping Centre. So it's all very exciting. So someone's about to be a €1,000 better off. Yeah, and they go back into the draw for the next two draws of the €1,000 yeah, on John's and David's. And then, obviously, the big... Is Sean still obsessed with the possibility that one person is going to win all €3,000 and he, the car? I know. He is. He I does. Mean, it was he thinks pains. that can happen. It was a I... pains to point. And don't forget... you. I... <laughs> Like I nearly could. sat. I nearly sat could. down I mean, and did. It could I know, happen. but I nearly sat down and did the maths for him to show him how it works. But actually, I would, I would say what is so amazing about this is like I had a lady on the phone yesterday and she was buying her tickets and for Christmas presents and different things like that and listing off all the people and I was thinking, gosh, she's great. She's buying all these tickets, and um, she won. She was one of the two and a half thousand winners in our last draw that we had, and Brilliant. she was talking about how great it was just to be able to. Sit back and have that nice little the cushion in the bank, mm. and she was okay. what you could spend it on that kind of thing. So it's lovely. It's great coming up to Christmas yeah. that we'll have three winners, three people that could win a thousand, and then be back in again. So. Great coming up to this weekend. People will be able to do some uh, Christmas shopping. All right. Um, have either of you seen or is it across your radar a cocaine bear? Oh, yeah. Uh, a caller wants to hear your review when it comes out. So a caller has literally made a request. You have to watch it now. The trailer is amazing. The trailer. I love Elizabeth Banks. Anyway, having said that, I didn't watch Charlie's Angels because I just didn't think it would work for me. But the trailer for Cocaine Bear, which is based on a true story, believe it or believe it not, looks amazing. And it is Ray Liotta's final screen performance. Um, it is Ray Liotta's Ray, okay, yeah. Yeah, from, and uh, again, loving him in um, Blackbird. Black, Blackbird, yeah. He's really, really good in that. He's so well cast in that. But the short answer is the trailer, I watched it a couple of times. I thought it was amazing, and I can't wait to see it. It's up there with um, Violent Night as one of those Is it kooky a series or a film? Pardon my ignorance. It's a movie, and it's a comedy based on a true story. Like, it's, it's, it's a heightened reality kind of thing about a bear that gets into a cocaine... Uh, that's the cocaine ship and that's thrown from a plane. So the, the bear is the principal character? The, the bear is the principal character and well, goes he, on we a... We go on his trip with a murder. We go on, we his go on trip his, with him. We go on his, his crazy oh, okay. cocaine-induced trip, I which is a murderous... I actually thought it was a joke. Yeah. I yeah. It was the, a joke. Is, the more he explains, did, the more I, it feels to me like a joke. I yeah. It didn't I, I'm feel trying it. to play with it. And it's... it's <laughs> um, I'm totally watching it's, it now. It's Carrie Russell, the lead from Felicity and the lead from The Americans. She's the lead. 
Oh. She's the lead. Yeah, I did. I, I genuinely thought it was yeah. kind of a, you know, when they put out those spoof kind of trailers well, on some of the time. people, everybody, American what, shows. The time. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, it's not you. It's me. I thought it was about five Quartier. past eleven. Um, unbearable weight of massive talent, Nicholas Cage. You've got him down as Nick Cage, so obviously your relationship with <laughs> you him know is what? significantly. Uh... We're best friends. We're best friends. <laughs> Uh, we're back. Okay, well, I have to say, I watched this movie a little while ago. It's been on Amazon for uh, for a while now. It's in my to watch list. Uh, yeah, it's uh, and I was kind of like, oh god. And you know, Nicholas Cage kind of came up and he came down, and then he had a few kind of personal issues that came up, and then he started being in. I mean, literally everything that was ever put on any mm. kind of a yeah. film he was in in it. And uh, you're kind of like, oh god. He went through that Bruce Willis. It's just sort of absolute Eric Roberts where, period, yeah, period exactly it, being yeah. absolutely anything and it, but like, it's an A-lister though like, uh, uh, well like everybody knows out. his name and that's yeah. the whole thing that's what made him an A-lister I think rather than the shows and he has well he has stellar performances too well, like, they, he does but he you kind of tend to forget because in mm. the last 10 years he hasn't really done as much as he had done in the you know he's done more B stuff a lot of B stuff yeah. that I would consider B stuff but this is I have to say I highly recommend it I really enjoyed it Nicholas Cage plays Nicholas Cage he's invited mm. he's, he's offered a million dollars to go to a very rich guy's birthday party and while there then there uh, all these things ensue one in which they're trying to write uh, your, the guy whose birthday it is wants to write a movie with oh. Nicholas Cage then there's a whole kind of a Flatley? thriller I so episode. Much. Well, well, but wait a second, it's, because I can announce funny. that the winner of one thousand euro is Henry McLaughlin from Mallon, number five eight one five eight nine one. Congratulations, uh, Henry! Henry wasn't able to come on with us. His phone was ringing out. He's probably busy, but. Henry McLaughlin from Mallon has won a thousand euro. Now the lines are open again if you want to be in with a chance to win that car, of course, but also the thousand euro on John Breslin's show and David James's show. Please uh, get on those phone lines now. Get on the website primarily. It's a quick and easy process for you. Highlandradio.com, folks. I have to say goodbye. I kind of That's feel like I right. put you off in your prime, Fanula, but you understand. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be the first time, of course. Listen, thank you. Sadly, my prime was a while ago. Uh, <laughs> what, five past eleven? <laughs> Ten past eleven? Uh, you were when, really flying there through when, the Quinn uh, review. Uh, You're right. Uh, quarter uh, past uh, eleven was your prime. When she sent that text to you saying she'll be there. At seven <laughs> Have a lovely weekend, everyone. And you too. Uh, stay tuned. John Bresson's coming up around the northwest. The nine till noon show is brought to you by Letterkenny Credit Union with monster loans available up to. 60,000 euro for all occasions. Visit Letterkenny